hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another Sunday, another week has gone by. We're all a week older and a week not the wiser. <clears throat> hello everyone, welcome, welcome. It's Warhammer Sunday. If you've not seen one of these before, weekend is my time where I work on my Warhammer army. And of a Sunday, I dive into a stream for three hours so you guys can hang out and join me and have a good time and chat. So hello and welcome, welcome one and all. It is Sunday, it's not particularly cold. Uh, it's kind of pleasant outside. Uh, you can see the scruffy mat is out. This means we will be doing some painty painty. We're going to be putting some paint on my chimera. Yes, that's why it's been primed and ready. Look, I've cheated. I've built it already and primed it. <laughs> Sharp. So yes, we're going to be doing that today. Uh, I'll get all the usual nonsense out of the way. Uh, if you've not seen one of these before, this is your chance to just hang out with me. I will be working on that and trying my best to hang out with you guys in chat. And what that means is I'll be hanging out with you guys in chat and trying my best to do some work because I usually get very little done. Um, if you've not seen one of these before, uh, welcome, welcome. Chat is here, as you can see on the telly screen. If you want to join in the live chat, chat even and do the typey typey uh, then you just need to make sure you're watching this on YouTube so if you're not watching it on YouTube and you're watching somewhere else like on Patreon or through Twitter or something or Facebook just click the little YouTube icon that's down in the bottom right hand corner here somewhere and that will insta magically transport you to the YouTubes where you can join in the live chat and have a good time I will be doing some stickery giveaways later on which I've forgotten to get out again um, so you need to be in the chat to do that uh, what else? Uh, if you want to ask me a question, please do. I depend on you to give me stuff to talk about. Uh, you can do so in the chat if you're in there. Just put your question or your comment in big fat capital letters so I have the chance to see it. Uh, if you want me to have a better chance of seeing it, do a super chat. It's a little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. That puts your chat comment in a big coloured box and gives me a little sound this and that I can hear. So I know you've done something because my chat is, I've got my iPad over here out of my line of sight. So I need help to know when you've done a chat. Uh, or if you want, if you've not got access to chat at all, if you can't get access to chat on your device, don't panic. You can send me an email. My address is here. It's fox at modelmakingguru.com. Com. You can pop me an email uh, and you can ask your question or comment there. Of course, later on when I do the sticker giveaways, uh, you can send me a question and answer to use in the sticker giveaways. Uh, and if I do use your question, I will send you a sticker. So if you want a guaranteed sticker, send me an email with your name, your address, because I need to know where to send you a sticker, your question, and yes, Dave, the answer as well in the same email. Yes, Dave. Uh, other than that, of course, as always, we are still doing Aviad's stream boss battle, which is up here. The health bar, Aviad is the current stream boss, and every time you do a super chat or do a tip through the tip jar, which is down here, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru, uh, or every time someone subscribes to this channel for the first time, it takes a little bit of his health off. Uh, slowly, slowly, we've got him down to 72,934. Whoever gets him to zero, uh, all the money that you raise through the super chats and the tip jar goes into a big pot, and whoever becomes the, the new stream boss by knocking Aviad to zero, apart from becoming the new stream boss, you get to claim that pot. Um, and that is basically what you basically do is you will get two to three hundred quids worth of Warhammer or Forge World of goodness. Basically, I tell you how much the pot is. You tell me what you want. I order it from you from Forge World or Games Workshop and it arrives at your door and you go happy face and you can make it and paint it. And it hasn't cost you a penny. So you get putting your tips and your super chats through. And if you're not subscribed to this channel already, do make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. It takes a little bit of his health off. The more you put through as a tip or a super chat the more health you take off Aviad's stream boss health bar. Uh, and eventually it will get down to zero. So what is the plan for today? Well, so I'm going to be painting my Chimera uh, today, hopefully getting some work done. I've gone ahead and primed it. I took some time yesterday to, uh, I was going to go outside and rattle can it with my um, Citadel Chaos Black, but I didn't have enough left. So what I've done, and my car's off the road, so I can't just go to the, the Warhamster store. Uh, and I'm skint, so I can't go to the Warhamster store. So what I did was I just got my UMP, um, primer and airbrushed these yesterday. I airbrushed the Hydra as well at the same time. That's off there off camera. So I thought I'd get that done, get it ready for today. Uh, I have a certain colour scheme in mind, but before we crack on, I'm going to have a big swig of coffee. <coughs> big coffee. Uh -huh. And have a quick look at chat before we go anywhere. Um, now basically, uh, Pascal Leverse, Le wow, words, Pascal Leverse wasn't in, hasn't in yet, but he was still first because even if he don't turn up, Pascal is still first. Uh, Cy Reynolds is in, as is Nim Cinderin. Welcome, both of you. JS Idaho, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Gaz Vickers, good morning, fellow heretics. Welcome, Gaz. Uh, Bory Models, hello all. Uh, Lord Barkley III came in very early. Every one of you turning up about 45 minutes ago. Uh, Aviad is having, is, is, 
Hello, talking. I'll start again. Aviad is in his happy place as he's got a boat of coffee, apparently. A coffee boat. He needs both hands to drink from it. I'm guessing it's one of those massive coffee cups. Like a big like espresso cup that's like that big. That would make me very happy. Uh, Chris, gross model, is uh, one of your mods today. He is in. Now, Chris has an germ. He has a giant germ. It's basically the size of Chris. It's one single germ, and it's the size of Chris's head. And it's making him a bit poorly sick. So he's sitting off to one side so you don't catch his an germ. So send him all your thoughts and prayers. And if you want to be effective, send him some medicine or some chicken soup. Thoughts and prayers. What a waste of time. Uh, who else have we got in? We have Candy Graham from Mongo. Candy Graham from Mongo. Candy Graham from Mongo. Uh, greetings all. Good luck with your recovery from the plague, Gross Models. Uh, to which I said, Gross Models has received the blessings of Papa Nurgle. They are super effective. So yeah, he's feeling a bit sorry for himself today. Um... Uh, Nim Cinderin says puppy licks. Puppy licks are also a good cure because we say in the chat how uh, thoughts and prayers are useless. And Nim Cinderin says puppy licks, puppy licks cure. And I says, yep, puppy snuggles cure everything. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Chris says puppy licks, snuggles and benelin are also accepted. Uh, JS Idaho says that Chris's new age health transceivers are online, to which I ask Kenneth, what is the frequency? Kenneth, what's the frequency? Uh, Ghost Lyle is in and displays many, many pineapples in the chat. This is correct. Um, who else have we got in? Dave, uh, blah, 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 chat just jumped. Dave at Butcher That Model is in. Another one of your mods for today. He's in. Welcome, Dave. Um, ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Blanco, Blanco. There's a conversation we had about using rude words in chat. Yes, I. this is my stream. Uh, for those that you don't know, I do a lot of streams. I do Saturdays, the Boom Hut stream. Sunday's this stream. And on Mondays, I do a stream for e-models. In the e-model stream, you can't swear or use bad language or anything because it's an e-model stream. Today and yesterday's stream, the Boom Hut stream and this stream, this is my stream. If you want to swear in chat, you can do. Do be aware that younger viewers may be watching. But I don't mind myself personally. Um, when I allow people into my streams, I don't let them swear. But if you're in chat, it's just chat. It's fine. But, you know, use your own common sense. I don't mind it personally. Uh, next, they will demonetize because of the Canadian anthem, says J.S. Ida. We talked about demonetization. Um, no, luckily, because the recording of the Canadian national anthem I use is by the, by the U.S. Marine Corps band, which, because it's a government organization, as part of the army, the Marine Corps, because it's a government organization recording of government employees, it's instantly public domain. <laughs> and the national anthem is public domain. <laughs> Why do you think I've got a national anthem as my... Yeah, it's good, isn't it? See? Um, so yes, they can't copyright that. Uh, Blanco Blanco says, "Huzzah! My first painting stream. Been looking forward to this. I hope I hope it's not as boring as it usually is. <laughs> we'll try and get some work done. Uh, I don't think Dave is ever going to live that down." Says Nim. Yes, about him sending me the questions and not including his actual answers. So I've got a question for you. Here's a question. I'm like, brilliant. What's the actual answer? Do. Um, what happened to your motorized horse? Wait, what? Who had a motorised horse? Uh, oh, do you mean my car? Oh, it's just uh, there's a, some battery problems. I've got to get the RAC out to look at it at some point after payday. Um, what about prayers to the God Emperor? Heresy detected. Yeah, but... You, ah, well, you see, that's... Yes. Shut up. Don't get me in that trouble. <laughs> uh, Jamie Byrne. Chris, the Gumplers have made you sick. Plus, can only ever make you happy, not sick. Jamie's in. Welcome, Jamie. Uh, Quano Man. Hey, Mr. Guru. Welcome, Quano Man. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for becoming a patron. Most appreciated. Uh, Multi Demon 123. Hello, fellas. Welcome, Osric 9000. Hi. Welcome, Osric. Uh, who else has come in that I didn't mention? Uh, Rusting Customs and Mickle Pickle are both in. Hello, all you lovely people, says Mickle Pickle. Uh, hello, says Rusting Customs. Welcome both to you. Paul, Paul Christian de Quant Minguet says, hello from Spain. Welcome. Hello from all the way from Spain. I hope you're having some decent weather there because we've got cold. And if you're in America, you're having like minus 45. We've just got, it's kind of not cold outside. It's kind of all right. But I hope you have some nice weather there in Spain. Wayne Haywood. Welcome, folks. I mean, afternoon, folks. Even. Uh, have I missed anybody else? If I've missed anybody, I do apologize. Chat keeps jumping around on me. Uh... That wasn't very pineapple of you. What is a car? Says Blanco Blanco. K A R E. Carré. Carré. I don't know. What is a car? Care. Carré. Never mind. Anyway, let's move on. So today, yes, we are going to be painting my uh, Chimera. Now, 
for my if, if you've not been watching these before if you've not seen one before i'm building my army and the theme of my army which was won by one of my followers winning a competition come up with the theme is my army is going to be based on visually the principality of zeon from the mobile suit gundam universe so uh, for example as you know i'm going to have three uh, three imperial knights one is painted up is done and painted up to look like a, a zaku that one's already finished all rusted and beaten and battered and horrible uh, one of them will be painted up to look like um a goof Rambo Ral's goof, it'll be in shades of blue. And one of them will be painted up to look like a very nice, clean and shiny, bright red Charles Zaku. So it'll be an Imperial Knight in reds and silvers and golds and things like that. Um, I've got other plans as well. The I've got some um, Tempesta Scions who'll be painted up to look like Charles sort of personal guard. So they'll look like char colours, but they'll be complementary to his uh, Imperial Knight. For my Imperial Guard, I'm going to go off colours that I found that are kind of basically Xeon Grunt Troop colours. So yellowy greens and things like that. And for the vehicles, I was going to use blue shades. However, doing some research, I'm actually going to go for greens because a lot of the Xeon vehicles appear to be green. So yeah, I was hoping to veer away from the standard colours for these things, but hey, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So they're going to be shades of green. I was doing some research uh, on my on my smart telephone uh, colour schemes because I do have the Citadel application and I found that moss green is actually a very nice colour. It's not too dark because you've got forest green which is a bit too dark for me. That one is a bit too dark I think. And we've got um, drab green like olive drab. That's a bit too bright and lemony. So I thought I'd go for moss green which is a halfway step between sort of olive drab and a kind of military green. So I'm going to go for that. So I'd happen to, I happen to have all four colours, Castellan Green, Athonian Camachade, Lauren Forest and Stratton Green. I happen to have all four of those. And I'm not going to necessarily do edge highlighting and stuff like that, but I will do my own method. Uh, but we're going to use those kind of colours. So I have them here. So what we're going to do is, today at least, we'll probably get done, is just the base green coat, which will be uh, obviously green. I'm going to do it my own way, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a base coat of the darkest green, which is the Castellan green. Then we're going to give it a shade of null oil. I know it says to use the Ethonian camera shade, but in the, first of all, we're going to give it a shade of null oil. Uh, then we're going to give it a shade of the Ethonian camera shade to, to green it up. Uh, oh, for, uh, maybe. Well, I'll tell you what, here's what we're going to do. I'll plan it as I go along, I'll make it up as I go along, but my plan is... Castellan green, then a shade of null oil, because I'm going to do post shading, not pre shading. I'm going to do post shading with a brush. So green, null oil, then a dry brush Castellan green again to bring back the, the main parts of the panels. Then we'll go in with the Ethonian camera shade. Then we'll go in with some dry brushing, perhaps, or some uh, techniques with the lighter greens. So that's probably what we're going to get done today. Have a quick look at chat. Um. What is, uh, that wasn't very pineapple of you. No, it's cold. It's minus four outside, says Ghost Lyle. Well, that's not too bad. Blue green compromise, my dude. Moss looks good, actually. Never mind, says, <laughs> yeah, Blanca Blanca's like, no, do blue green. And then he's like, actually, no, moss looks pretty good. So hopefully it'll look different enough to the standard sort of colours that Cadian vehicles tend to be. I'm not going to do a camouflage scheme. But the thing is, I'm going to have various different vehicles. So I may do different camouflage or colour schemes on them, but I'm, I'm going to keep them greens. The, 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 Imperial Guard troops I'll have will be various shades of yellowy greens. If you look at artwork, especially for the um, hard graph kits, uh, they're always got sort of green outfits or yellowy green tones and things like that. They might have a jacket of a dark green olive drab and then pants of, say, a yellowy green. And the boots are always like brown leather. So my, my infantry are going to be various colours. And I'm going to use all the colour schemes as well. Like I'm, I need to work out which guys are going to be painted like TriStar Ace pilots. And things like that. So as we go along, we'll fiddle with the colours. Uh, right, so I'm going to have a swig of the coffee. And now we're going to do some painting. Yes, now I've got my wet palette ready. However, I'm not going to use that. <laughs> I'm going to use... Oh my God, I'm going to use the Citadel palette pad thing. Just for the base coat to start with. Uh, because I need to get this painted. No airbrush, I'm going to brush it. Uh, and I have a particular te uh, technique that I've got used to. Um... And it needs not a wet palette. You can use a wet palette for this. But if I do this on the wet palette, then within five minutes, I'll have to change the wet palette paper. And that's not something I want to do on live stream. Because that means me just walking away for five minutes. So what I'm going to do is actually use this first, just to get the basic green down. Now, I'll probably use a lot more paint than I need to, to do that. But I don't really mind. So what I need is a decent base brush. 
Base, how low can you go? Uh, now, if, here's my here's my tips for painting big flat things. Uh, where's my glass gone? For painting things like this. The trick is when you're doing this kind of paint job, doing it by brush. Uh, the big trick is to get the smoothest coat possible on here, because if you brush this. Um, too heavily you're gonna get brush marks it's gonna look like ass and then when you paint other bits over like there needs to be metallic or things like that it's gonna look like complete gash so the real trick is to try and get this coat as smooth as you possibly can and this is where citadel's base brushes actually are really really good uh, now I haven't got one of the I've got some of the smaller ones but I don't need the smaller base brushes at this point this is just a case of getting this painted I'm gonna do the base green color first because there are gonna be other colors like you know the this thing the, the big scoopy dozer blade is gonna be um, I might do some striping on that and then do lots of weathering and scrapey painting and all that kind of stuff I don't know yet but that might be a different color Obviously, the track's going to be a different colour, uh, and some bits are going to be slightly different colours and tones. But I want to get the base green colour down, because the, the green colour, because I want to do a post-shading effect, it's going to involve dry brushing, and I can't be dry brushing green when I've got like delicately painted guns and other bits already painted. So I need to do all the green first, and then hope I don't screw up anything else later on and have to try and touch in the green. <clears throat> um, let's have a look. Not using a wet palette. Yay, he's learning. Oh, no, I reluctantly sometimes use a non-wet palette. I have no idea what you're talking about. Is it a Gumpler thing? Time to admit I have no idea what they are. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> I mean, I've seen pictures of uh, retro Transformer-esque robots, but that's the limit of my knowledge. That and painting on some of them is top-notch. Uh, what, on Gumpler? Is it because they're talking about Gumpler? I don't know. It's gone confusing now. Anyway, so here is how I do it. Um, I basically need a big fat brush. Uh, the base brushes are really nice for this. If you use a dry brush, a still dry brush, you'll get a different texture. These give you a nice clean texture. What I'm going to do is, got to be Castellan Green as the base. I'll just double check. If you haven't got the Citadel Paint app, you need the Citadel Paint app. Seriously. If you can't unlock your phone, thank you, uh, you need the Citadel Paint app. So it's Castellan Green. Excellent. Right, that's all I needed. If you haven't got it, it's free. Why haven't you got it? Uh, so, yes, uh, yes, I'm not going to use a wet palette for this purely because it's going to take so much paint, I'll just end up having to clean my wet palette out, and that would just be sadness. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to get my. Where's my getting paint out of the pot brush? It's that one. Some tissue, of course, obvs. <whistles> tunes in my head now. Uh, and we're going to be really generous with this because you're going to use a lot of paint. So we're going to get a lot of paint on the palettings. I hope this is in shot for you. Lots of paint on the palettings. This is probably going to come out similar to when I painted my enormous Master Chief, I would suspect. Okay, so the trick now is get yourself your big fat brush. Get yourself the tiniest amount of water you can even begin to imagine because these things suck them up like a sponge. I'm literally touching it into the water like that. There's almost nothing on there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that in there. I'm going to work it in the paint. But I'm going to take it from the edge and slowly get some paint on the brush. If I just go in and scoop the paint out and then start brushing it on, I've got a ton of paint on there that's all on the surface of the bristles. I want to get the paint in amongst the bristles. And I want to control how much paint I've got on that. I don't need a lot. I don't need a big blob of paint. If I just go and scoop it up, I'm going to make a mess. So once I've done that, all I need to do is start brushing. And the trick with this to get a nice smooth coat is, like I said, first of all, control how much paint is on your brush. So that backwards and forwards in the paint helps get it between all the bristles. And then what you want to do is you want to make that brush full of paint last as long as you possibly can. So what I'm actually doing is spreading this paint out as much as I can before I need to reload the brush. And it gets to the point where I'm, I'm effectively dry brushing it because there's so little on there. But you can see I'm spreading it out. And when I'm spreading it out, I'm going over the paint repeatedly. I'm spreading out the paint that's already on there and smoothing it. And I'm trying as best I can to go in one direction. 
so I'll get some more and this is the trick to getting a smooth coat kind of key of these brushes they are really really good for this I've tried other brushes that don't work quite as well and it's sort of sticking in one direction if you can it's not always possible use the edge sometimes but it's about getting I don't need to paint that bit really but because that's where my spinny bit goes it's about getting it almost like a dry brush but not quite and it's difficult for you to see on camera because it's a black model and it's got dark green paint put on it which is a bit of a pain but it's it's just spreading this paint as thin as possible now if you make this paint too thin it's not going to work because then you're just basically putting a wash on it and take your 5,000 coats. If you do it too thick, like if you just take it straight from the palette here and not actually add a tiny amount of water, you risk it just being too thick and gloopy. And some paints might actually be fine like that, some of the colours, but some of them you need to thin them down a tiny bit. That's why you need the tiniest amount of water on your, on your brush. I've not added more. I've not done anything extra. I've just literally got that little tiny amount of water that I first put on and that's all I've needed so far. And it's just really to be in the brush. And what you'll find is you can very quickly get a model painted up. Maybe even with just one coat. I'm just going to put my visor on so I can see what I'm doing. We might only need one coat, but we'll find out. Now it is quite hard for me to for you to see, I know, because like I say, it's a black model. And it's a dark green paint so but even if you if you know if you forget to get some water on there and you start taking the paint off don't panic as long as you're spreading it as best you can like i'm trying to spread it out like spreading marmite on toast oh yeah marmite big thing at the minute uh, then that's how you know that's how you get a nice smooth coat now it's not going to be as smooth and beautiful as if you airbrushed it i'm just get some more water a little bit more water tiny amount ready just the touch to the water. There's almost less than a drop. I'm going to work that in. And I'm mixing it into the paint. Because what I'm trying to do is, if I just put a drop of water there and then mix in a little bit of paint, I've basically got coloured water. But if I mix the paint around, I'm, I'm thinning the paint a bit more than just that blob of water. I'm spreading the water amongst the paint, as it were. And it gives me a lot more mileage. So that's why I've got a big patch of thinned paint now, so I don't need to keep adding water all the time. And I've actually forgotten what I was talking about just then. Brilliant. Dee -dee -dee. So yeah, just keep just keep spreading it and working it thin. And it does allow you to very quickly paint up a nice coat. Now, like I said, yeah, that's what I was saying. It's not going to be as smooth and flawless as an airbrush coat. Of course it's not. You're brushing it on a model. But things to keep in mind. This is a tabletop model that I play, intend to play on the tabletop, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's not going to be looked at that closely. It's going to have a lot of weathering on it as well, which again adds to the it doesn't really matter because it's going to have fading and shading and maybe powders and other kinds of things. It's meant to be a used, battered vehicle. If you were doing some sort of, say, Tau vehicle, or with the apostrophe to Ow, or Eldar jet bike or something like that that you wanted to be nice and clean and shiny you might not want to do this you might want to use an airbrush because that'll give you a smoother cleaner effect but if you're doing something like Imperial Guard where frankly it's designed to last about five minutes on the battlefield and if it does last long it's going to be potentially hundreds of years old <laughs> yeah it's, it's not going to look good so just get everything covered it's a bit loose that missile i may i expect this missile may pop off don't be surprised if this missile falls off because it feels a bit loose for some reason now it's not going to be that color when it's finished but a tiny bit of water i'm literally getting like three bristles in the water and then that's as much as i want to add uh yeah the missile will be a different color it won't be green when it's finished And because you put it on a thin coat, so thin, of course, this missile is going to pop off in a minute. I can see it wibbling and wobbling. Uh, because it is thin, you've thinned it a bit, you can actually go back over it a few minutes later. You don't have to put it to one side and wait for half an hour. By the time you've done it all, you can go back around and do another coat if you need to. I'm going to use a smaller brush to get in there because I'm having trouble. 
Oh, that's quite black still. So you can see getting your base coat down is not, not really hard at all. Not really a skillful job. It's just learning learning about how to, you know, the consistency of your paint. How to judge it. It's, it's the feel of the paint when you when you're going backwards and forwards on the on the palette. If it's when you're mixing it like this with the you're not even seeing that are you? When you're mixing it like this with the brush, if it's sort of resisting or you've got any kind of friction, then it's too thick, it's too stodgy. If it's just giving you no resistance whatsoever, it's just too thin, it's just water. And it's just learning the feel of the paint and knowing when it's just about right. See, I know I don't have to get water in here every single time, but I do have to have water every now and then and I can kind of figure that out. It just comes with experience. So let's get this done. I apologize, I can't look at the chat while I'm doing this. So talk amongst yourselves. I shall have a look at the chat in a moment. <laughs> this would probably look a lot better if it was a light blue color because you could see it. <laughs> okay, a little bit of water, tiny molecule of water on like the bit of one bristle. I tend to go in at the pointy end of the brush, the sticky out end, and get a dot of water on that couple of bristles that stick out. And that, uh, that gives me enough water then. I don't need more water than that. Let's get the underneath done. So yes, airbrushing will be a lot smoother, but let's be honest, if you want to airbrush a Citadel paint, you've got to fart around thinning it to the right level, put it into a dropper bottle, because it's pointless trying to get it out the actual bottle it comes in. Got all kinds of messing about. For a tabletop playable model, it's not worth it. Just just brush it. If you're making a display piece that you want to maybe sell or just display in a cabinet and you want it to be beyond tabletop quality, then yes, I would probably start decanting my paints out and airbrush this. I'd still use Citadel paints because they're the exact colours I want, but I'd go a lot deeper with the colours. Do, 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 do. I'm not being super careful down here because this is underneath that you're never going to see. So you can see here the paint on the palette's getting a bit worn out now, so I need to get some more paint from the pot. Okay, but it's kind of almost a partial dry brush, pretty much. You're almost getting to the point of dry brushing. De -de -de, more paint bigger! More paint bigger! So how is everybody? How are you all? Uh, thank you to everyone last night who watched the... Uh, I can't get my words out today. Who watched the mobile... Right, I'm starting again. Thank you to everybody last night who joined us for the Model Makers Boom Hut Mopal Making Stream number two. For those that you don't know, uh, I run a Facebook group. Most of you know anyway. I run a Facebook group uh, called the Model Makers Boom Hut on Facebook. If one of the mods, Chris or Dave or... Da hey, Dad, Dad's in. If one of you could please post up a link in the chat to the Model Makers Boom Hut, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I run a group called the Model Makers Boom Hut, and we're doing a group build at the minute to make very bad starter kits with very limited rules on what you can use to make the kit. So it's like going back to being seven years old and uh, nicking equipment from your mum's sewing box and kitchen equipment and stuff. So we did a live stream last week and we did one yesterday and it's basically a, a two or three hour live stream where we're, the guys are working on their terrible starter kits. And at the same time, we actually allow members of the Boom Hut to join in the live stream and show us how their builds are going. Tiny amount of water on the end there, just the tiniest amount. Give it a good mix. Um, yeah, that went well. So thank you to every one of you, if any of you are watching now, who came in last night and joined in the stream. It was a good time. Everyone's having fun with their, with their terrible starter kit builds. And by fun, I mean the hating every minute of it, but fun for me because I'm watching it and I'm getting my big fat dose of Schadenfreude because <laughs> I'm not building one. I've got, I'm too busy actually, you know, monitoring the stream and controlling everybody coming in and out. So, yeah, I just get to watch everybody suffer. It's great fun. Tiniest amount of water, really tiny amount. Mix it all together. <clears throat> so I've got a good reservoir of th slightly thinned paint and then get it on the model. Spread it out. Spread
spread it like something you'd spread. Remember, you're wanting to try and get as thin a coat as possible. As you possibly can with a big fat brush. Now, if you did this with a small brush, the disadvantages are, A, it would take you a lot longer. Uh, and B, a small brush hasn't got the bristles. So you'd be getting lots and lots and lots of brush marks. The advantage of this big fat brush, this big brace brush, is I can cover it quickly and I can smear the paint around fairly nicely. I can, I'm only being gentle. Smear the paint around and get a reasonably smooth finish. You can see there, I get it in the light. It's not, it's not brush marking. There's no, it's not covered in brush marks. It's not 100% smooth, but it's not the most brush marky thing ever. Purely because the, the large amount of bristles and the big sort of air surface area of the brush means I can spread out the paint nicely. If I used a small brush, I could only spread out the paint in tiny areas. And therefore you'd have lots of overlap between all the areas that you painted. So that's where you get lots of streaky marks and, and patchiness and brush marks and that. Whereas this, I can just spread the paint out nicely. It's a bit too thick maybe. Give me a bit too much resistance. Put a bit more water in there. Mix it in. So that, when I paint it on, looks as brush marky as hell. That's horrible. But if I just gently start smoothing it, it will eventually settle down. And it will self-level to a certain degree as well. These paints are quite good at self-leveling down a little bit. So it just takes practice, that's all. You just get used to it. And again, we are going to be weathering it anyway, so it's not the end of the world if there's a few brush marks here and there. The most it's ever going to be seen is on a tabletop. It's not a display piece, this, so it doesn't have to be spot on. Museum quality perfect. Bam, bam, which is also why I'm not going to do like proper full on massive weathering on it either. Because these are going to be played on the tabletop, hopefully at some point, I can't really go the whole hog and do lots of streaking and weathering powders and all that. I mean, I can do. For things like streaking but for things like weathering powders your models aren't that handleable when you've used lots of complicated techniques like weathering powders you tend to find a lot of time the powders just come off or you know that kind of thing are easily damaged so i'm keeping it as much as i can to actually paint it on detail stuff i can just paint on so dry brushing and things like that so we're not going to be doing a massive, massive weathering job on these. They're going to look weathered, but they're not going to be like, you know, weathering powders and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's on there. I will get these side bits painted and then we'll have a quick look at the chattings and see what chattings is doing. Again, if you want to know how much water I'm taking out, I'm taking out literally, if this comes out on camera, literally, there's a couple of bristles sticking down here. I'm literally getting that much water. It's just touching those three or four bristles at the corner. Mixing it into the paint just to, to dilute that pile of paint out Get it into the bristles and then we can just what do we do Ted? Oh, he's not here. Slap it on Slap it on Now that's actually come out a bit thin so I didn't mix the water off the brush into the paint enough So I've still got a lot of water on the brush there. So what I'm gonna do is because that's what I don't want because if you go in with the paint too thin like that, it takes longer to dry. You've got to sit around and wait. So I'm going to go to the other side. We will get some paint on the brush. There's still some water in there. Get some paint on the brush. And we'll see that's better. That's more what I'm after. Much better. Because although it's counterintuitive, if you put the paint on too thin, it will take longer to dry because it's waiting for the water to evaporate. If you put the paint on a little bit thicker, just thinned a tiny amount, but not quite, you know, not as thick as it comes out of the pot, but a little bit thicker, it actually dries to the touch faster. So you can go over it again with another coat quicker, or you can get in there and handle the model like I'm holding this now. I'm holding it here where I've just brushed there a minute ago. But it's fine because the paint's kind of already dry to the touch. A lot of it's just intuition. You just learn... A feel for your paint you learn how the paint's going to behave and act 
and you kind of get to it. And it varies. The thing is, a lot of people say to me, especially when you're talking about airbrushing, what's the thinning ratio for Humbro paint or for, you know, Tamir paint or Citadel? What's the thinning ratio? How much water do I need to add up to the palette? And, and it's one of those questions that's like saying, well, how much petrol do I need to put in my car? I don't know. What car is it you're driving? What's where you want to go? How many miles do you want to do? What kind of tyres have you got? You know, what's the conditions? So the best way I'd, I'd say to approach any kind of working with paint, working out thinning, whether you're brushing it, airbrushing it, however you're doing it. With airbrushing, it's easy. Just get it to the consistency of skimmed milk, whatever the paint is, that's all you need. So enamels and lacquers are usually thin enough. When you're brushing, it's impossible for me to tell you exactly how much to thin it because it depends what technique you're using. Like if you're using this kind of smearing it everywhere technique, if you're using delicate brush strokes, if you're using detail painting, depends on the brand, it depends on the specific colour. Because you always find, and I don't say often, I say always, you'll always find even with the same paint brand, different colours in the, from that brand may require different levels of thinning. So it does become more of an intuitive thing. You just get a feel for it. And you kind of instinctively know, based on what technique you're going to use and how you're going to be using the paint, you get to learn what's, what's a good amount of thinning. Like if I was painting little details here and not this big blast of colour, I'd probably thin it a bit more. Obviously I'd use a finer brush, but I'd be thinning it a bit more because it gives me more control. So don't overthink it. Just go in. You see here I'm being quite careless. I'm just doing it back and forth. I'm trying to keep it this way as much as possible. And I've gone over it almost three times now and it's not messed up the paint. If that was Tamiya paint, you'd have made a mess of that. It'd be all lumped up. But this stuff dries fast enough that it comes out quite well. Now, the other reason I can be quite fast with this and not be taking lots of time is because if I was airbrushing this model, I'd do lots of pre-shading. I'd do a pre-shading coat first to get nice shadows everywhere. So, you know, the edge of panels and recesses, I'd want them to look darker. So I'd, I'd do a primer coat and then I'd do a, a black uh, coat to be the pre-shade coat on some recesses and edges. Then I'd go over with the base color and I'd have less of it where I want the shadow to be and things like that. It's fine if you're airbrushing, but how do you, how do, you do that if you're brushing? Well, this is the way I'm gonna do it. First off, prime it in black. Doesn't always work. If you're painting your model yellow or red, priming in black's a really bad idea. Uh, but for this it works. But yeah, prime it, prime it in a dark color, in case black. You can't paint on pre-shading lines when you're doing brush painting, because all you end up doing is just painting over them. So what I like to do is prime them in black. Brush paint on my base color. But do it like this. I'm doing it not carelessly, but I'm not taking my time. I'm not making sure it covers every single corner and recess and everything. I'm just getting the brush in there and wiggling it around and it'll cover most. But there will be some areas where it hasn't caught. It's not got paint in there. There'll be some areas like in recesses. You can see the recess around this panel. Well, you probably can't see it on camera, but the recess is a little bit darker because I'm not quite getting paint in there. I'm not, dig I'm not digging the brush in. I'm kind of almost dry brushing it, but with like, it's almost like wet brushing, I suppose. So there will be little bits where there's less paint. That gives you one little bit of shade. Then we're going to use a shade in a bit to do a wash to really get all the details. And then we're going to do dry brushing later on to bring the color back, to bring the highlights back. And that's how we're going to get a sort of pre-shaded effect without actually doing any pre-shading. Now it's not perfect and it's nowhere near as good as airbrushing it. You'll never beat airbrush for quality. But like I say, this is a tabletop model. Now, there's nothing wrong at all if you're making your tabletop models to be playable. On the tabletop, there's nothing wrong at all with painting them to a museum quality standard. Spending weeks and weeks painting each vehicle. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. If you want to do that, you go and do it. And they'll be the best ones on the table. And if you go and play in a store or a club, they'll be the best looking models in the room. Uh, but the reason I want to just get them done and not worry too much is because um, A, they're going to be handled a lot. 
And what that means is, at some point, the, I need to get more paint. They're probably going to break. Something will break. Something will get knackered. The paint will get scratched off. And it's if I've done, if I've spent you know days and days and days, maybe a couple of weeks doing a museum quality build, and then half the paint gets scratched off because some schmuck drops it on the floor or it breaks in half or something, then that's a nightmare to fix it. Uh, whereas if it's a, if it's a simple paint job like this, then if something breaks off or it goes wrong and I have to repair it, I can easily reproduce the paint job without making it really obvious. I can blend it back. And the other thing to keep in mind, of course, if you're making an army, you might have to paint six of these. Do you really want to sit there and do a two week paint job on six vehicles and then realize you've got like 40 or 50 Imperial Guard to paint as well? No, you can do. Some people do and they're insane. But what a lot of people will do is for painting in bulk when you're building an army you're going to play, they just keep it simple. There's an old phrase I used to use that was told to me by someone once. Uh, if ever you're not sure what to do, kiss. What does kiss mean? Keep it simple, stupid. If you've got any kind of paint jobs to do and you've got to paint a lot, the golden rule is to keep it simple. If you're doing a commission build, if somebody's commissioned you and is paying you to paint their Warhammers, then yes, you can give them the best paint job you can do in your life because they're paying you hard-earned money. And therefore, you give them museum quality. Even if they're going to play them on the tabletop, that's their problem. If they're paying you to do it, you give them the best job you can do. If they want you to do that. If you're doing it for yourself, just to get it on the tabletop. Unless you actually, you know, want to spend five years painting and never actually playing anything. Keep it simple, stupid. Right, now this is the tricky bit now, because this one I'm going to have to have a smaller brush to get into the little tiny areas. Tiny area, all my area. Tiny areas. Nobody gets that joke. I often say, ooh, my area, and nobody understands what that reference is. It's a reference to a software synthesizer I had many years ago on my computer. Um, I'd sold all my synthesizers, but I needed to do some music, and I was like, well, I'll, get, I'll buy a, like a software one I can just run on my PC, and it's like a virtual synthesizer. And one of the preset sounds was a flute called Ooh My Area. Ooh My Area. I don't know what it meant. And there's only one other human being on this planet I know that would get that joke. But you'll all get it now, but it's not really funny. But it doesn't mean anything to you guys. There's a flute sound called Ooh My Area. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm not being too worried about the paint job on this dozer blade. I don't mind if this is a bit scratchy and rough and ready. Uh, Butch that model says, don't say things like that, Fox. You will jinx us all. I'm scared to take Nagash to the store for games night now after spending three weeks painting. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's as far as I can go with the big fat brush, I think. Now, it is a bit patchy. There's some bits where it's not quite as dark, but that's the whole point. I want it to have a bit of that going on. I'll give that brush a quick clean. Do, 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 do. What I need to do now that brush will need a proper proper clean later on because that's got paint all up in the ferrule and everything. Normally, the golden rule is when you're painting, don't get paint more than two thirds of the way up the brush because that's how you get paint in the ferrule. But these are big base brushes, and I'll probably end up buying more, so I don't mind getting them up. This is kind of a aggressive way to paint with these puppies anyway. So, right, is that going to get me in this little crook and nanny? Yes, that should, might go in. A slightly smaller base brush. See how this one does? Again, the tiniest amount of water. I mean, really, it's just damp. Nothing more. You're not trying to make coloured water. You're trying to make slightly thinner paint. So, I've never, I've never got on with this idea of having a pool of water on the in the palette. That's if you want to do a glaze. If you're making a glaze, then yeah, you can control the glaze by having a pool of water and the paint next to it, and you can mix and match. If you're just trying to get paint to be brushable, you don't want it that thin. That's when you just need to uh, add some water to the paint, not paint to the water, if you know what I mean. You, kind of, you know what I mean. Now, this is quite hard to get the brush in here, so again, this may not come out looking fantabulous, but if you keep in mind, that A, it's hard to see anyway. 
these are the, these are the tips and tricks you see a it's hard to see anyway so probably most people will never see in here right under the dozer blade uh, it's going to be weathered heavily because it's a dozer blade so it's going to be given lots of washes and shades and if I was going to do some powders and pigments it would be on the dozer blade but I probably won't I have lots of washes and other things on here so again it's going to hide any sins and it's supposed to be battered and beaten anyway so don't lose too much sleep over areas that are hard to see or constantly in shadow for example if you're painting a figure and the figure is holding his rifle up over his chest and you can't quite see the aquila on his chest but you can see it a bit but not massively don't get too carried away trying to get little tiny brushes in there to paint the aquila beautifully and if again if you're painting an army where it's about quantity and not necessarily quality although it can be if you want it to um, a good speed technique is if you can't see it you don't need to paint it if you can't see it even if you try and move the model around and everything else close up then nobody's ever going to see it once it's on the tabletop so nobody cares just don't bother painting it you can do that there's nothing wrong with that at all again it's just a question of speed if it's a commission you paint it if it's your own army and you just need to get an army ready to go on the tabletop you just just don't do that bit if you can't see it doesn't matter nobody's ever going to see it nobody cares okay so there we go that's the basically the hole done uh oh, i've got to get around there's little guns on the side haven't i so let me move the camera in a bit because you're a bit far away there aren't you let me just how close can i get you before you can't see anything uh, before you can see is like my enormous hand or head or something let's have a look is that gonna be too close that should be all right you can see better now can't you let me know if i go off camera i'm kind of trying to keep it over the palette because that tells me where the camera is i have to hope i don't drop the tank in the paint that would be sadness so you can see there the paint finish it's not it's not not perfect but it's not that far off airbrush quality it's not airbrush quality because there are some subtle brush marks but only subtle and it looks patchy right now and that's only because this is the first coat of paint and we've got lots more to put on there so once we've done lots of weathering on here and done shades and paint chipping and maybe some streaking and some other bits and bobs yeah and dry brushing dirt textures it's going to look a lot better so don't panic at first if it looks a bit ropey it's not a problem it's like any any art project that's far too much water any arty project before it's finished projects that are halfway through be they models or drawings or anything like that projects like these that are halfway through before they're finished they'll always look a bit like ass it's the order of things it's how creative creative arts work before they're complete they always look terrible and you always get a little bit of like oh it looks i can't oh it's oh Oh, and I've got to do the guns, haven't I? Keep not doing the bit I need to do. <laughs> Idiot. Before the process is complete, it will always look a bit ropey and rubbish. That's normal. That is completely normal. I've said this before. When I used to do cartoon art, I'd do like the ink. Pen I'd do uh, ink and watercolor art cartoons. And you pencil out the you pencil out the drawing you want to do. You pencil it all out to sketch it to get the lines, and it always looks fantastic because you've got the beautiful you know, fading effect of the pencil. Then you do the inking, so you ink it all in, uh, and it looks terrible because it's just black and white, and you're like, you lose all the grace and dynamic sort of effects that the pencil drawing gives it, the shading and smooth edges. So it looks a bit clinical and lifeless. Then you do your first basic watercolor coat, and it looks terrible. For those that you don't know, if you're doing a traditional comic book, you don't do it on computer if you do it traditionally what you do is you you pencil it out then you ink it then you get rid of the pencil and then you color it with watercolors the old school way of drawing comic books um but it looks terrible because it's one coat of watercolors you've got the base colors in there but then you start adding uh shading or shadows or what have you and it starts to look a bit better and then when you've got that done what i used to do then was go over again with the inks and this time i would build the inks up so the first coat of inks would just be thin outlined so i knew where to put the colors the second coat of inks 
will be the big bold curvy lines that vary in thickness and that's when it all comes together and you sit there and you go now that looks awesome but up until that point it all looks like unabashed ass and you get to learn that you get to learn that you get used to it after a while and it stops being a problem right now i need a base brush that's not massive so i'm gonna have to use a small small is this an extra small this is a medium base brush uh because i need to get into these little nooks and crannies uh, and this is where it gets challenging because I've got to hold the thing that I'm painting. So, yeah, I'm going to put the water here. I'll get this turret based and then we shall do some chatting. Because I need to have a swig of coffee. I'm starving for a coffee. I'm starving? That's not the right word. If you are subscribed to the Warhammer Conquest thing, by the way, you get one of these base brushes and they are fantastic. They are brilliant brushes. If you're looking to get a nice smooth finish, for some reason, they do work really well to give you a nice smooth finish. I don't know why, it's just, it's just something about the brush. Uh, and I know they're expensive, these brushes. If you get excess water, get it off on your hand. They're not cheap and they're not the best in the world, but they are really good at what they do. I've been lately, I know I've got my, I've got my uh, Army Painter brush set, but I have also as well been, depending on Citadel, artificer brushes and very fine small layer brushes for some small detailing lately and it's just worked really well so they are really good they're not the best by any means and they're not the cheapest but they are good they're, they're fine for painting big flat areas i've not actually found another brush as good as that those big base brushes i was using for just getting coverage on a large model i've not actually beaten those brushes yet even the army painter ones aren't as good because it's just the way the fibers hold the paint and the way they they spread out when you paint and it's hard to explain they just don't give you such a nice smooth finish nice smooth finish das ist richtig now again i appreciate this is a dark object and it's a dark color paint so you're probably not seeing much right now. I'm having str I'm struggling to see it and I'm right here. So yeah, you guys are probably not seeing a lot. The other thing you'll learn as you're starting out, if you're just starting out as well, it doesn't matter, you know, it can be any kind of paint you're using it, not just Citadel paints, but the other thing you'll learn as well over time is how the paint behaves when as it dries. I always encourage people to try as many different when it comes to painting, especially brush painting, try as many different brands as you want, try different products. Don't just become an evangelist for one particular brand. I mean, I know I use I use it a lot and I go on about them. When you're just starting out, make sure to try as many different brands and products as possible. Because while I might sit here and say that I absolutely adore Citadel paints and they behave really well and I know them inside out and I love them, you might find that you prefer Vallejo paints or army painter paints or dare i say i'm my mig paints i don't want to get on with those um so while you're just starting out and learning try lots of different things see which one works best for you but spend time with each of them to get to know them and one one thing to know for sure is how a paint actually dries for example if you if you get used to citadel paints you know that there's a certain point at which you can put paint on the model. Too much water, far too much water. You know, I, I know, for example, I can put paint on and a certain amount of brush markiness is fine because I know that there's a certain amount of to which the paint will self level and flatten out. And I can't put that into words for you. I can't explain it. I can't I can't quantify it and say this, that and the other. I can just it's a gut thing. It's a feel thing. I can f I can feel it in the paint. So I know that if I if I put the paint on, it looks a bit brush marky. I can look at it and think either that's going to smooth out, it'll be fine, or my God, that's far too brush marky. I've made a complete mess of that. I'm going to have to strip it and start again. I just kind of know, and it becomes instinctive after a while, and it's really hard to explain in any good way. But it's something you do pick up. And I would say, 
I've said before, you know, many times that airbrush, learning to airbrush is a very steep learning curve, but very quick. You pick it up really, there's not a lot to learn and it takes, it's a bit of a steep learning curve, but it doesn't take long to learn it. Same with brush painting. Learning to brush paint is actually a lot harder than learning to airbrush, in case you're wondering. So yeah, don't be put off. Try, try lots of different things, try different paints. You'll find the paints that work for you. I always say that. Don't, just because, you know, I've been doing this for like 30 odd, depressingly almost 40 years now. Um, so I've tried a lot of different things and I've come to learn the paints that I like. I know them inside out. I know the paints that I don't like. But while you're starting out, you haven't got that luxury of the, the built-in knowledge. So just try everything. Try everything. Eventually you'll settle on products that you trust and that you know you you know how they work inside out you, you, you don't have to think about them you can just get on with it <clears throat> that's when you can then be like right now i can just use these and not really worry about others but i'll still use other paints if i need a color that say i can't get in citadel at that particular time but there's a vallejo version i'll get the vallejo version so i'm not i'm not locked into one brand but if I've got a choice, I have brands that I prefer. Just because I've used them all, kind of, well, most, not everything. I haven't yet tried uh, P3 paints. I've not just not had occasion to try those. P3, is that the ones? Uh, I've not had occasion to try the Coat Darm. Or as the Americans call it, Coat D-Arm. Coat Darm, which are, uh, if you don't know... You get some coat darn paint. They are the actual original Citadel paints before they reworked them all. Uh, it was the company that used to make. I think it is anyway. If I remember rightly, is it coat darn that used to make the paints for Citadel? And then they changed the manufacturer. So I think anyway. I could be wrong because I know it's somebody out there that makes paints that is the original Citadel manufacturer. Tell me if I'm wrong in the in the in the chat. <clears throat> do 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 okay i'm not going to paint that too much because that's a gun barrel so it's obviously not going to be green gun barrel across the universe i can't sing that song because i'll get copyright strike <laughs> yeah and again i'm not being too fussy with the hatch here because it's going to be weathered i've got to paint the dude anyway so i'm not going to be too fussy with that it's going to be weathered i just need to get the base color on for now for now uh i shall paint the inside of the hatch even though the inside of the hatch will end up being a different color completely i'll just do the outer inside of it i don't need to paint the inside of it because that's going to be a lighter green color but the outside i shall paint this green if you know me, you know that I like to try and reproduce a sort of um, zinc chromate cockpit green effect for my vehicle interiors. And if you're not aware, zinc chromate, I, I think it's still used now, I guess it is, uh, especially in World War II. When you, the reason everybody had these bright green cockpits in World War II is because they weren't actually painted. They were just... The metal was paint was uh, plated with zinc chromate, which is a plating, uh, and that would be more durable than paint. There's no point in them spending all the money putting paint on a fighter plane cockpit in World War Two, because it's just going to come off. Zinc chromate was a nice bright colour, and it was like an anti corrosion, and it was anti it was a protecting protection coat, and so on. So that's why they had the bright green cockpits. It wasn't actually a paint. I'm having trouble seeing here because this is in shadow and I can't actually quite see it very easily. My lighting fails me. <sighs> but we're nearly done. What time is it? Well, it's four o'clock. We're going for an hour. Don't think we'll get this finished today, chaps and chapesses. This may take more than a day. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
but you see how using a smaller brush takes a lot longer than using that big massive brush, which is obviously obviously logical. The smaller brush takes longer, but this is a much smaller piece of the kit, and yet it's taken me maybe as long to paint this as it has to paint the entire hull with the bigger brush on the other side. So always, if you can, go for the biggest brush you can feasibly use on whatever you're painting, especially on figures. If you're painting a figure, don't think, or the small thing, don't think that because whatever you're painting is small, you're necessarily going to need to use the tiniest piece that you can imagine, the brush that you can imagine. It's maybe not always the case. Sometimes a big massive brush will look much better. The tiniest amount of water. Do, 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 do. Uh, it's hard for me to actually see because of the lighting in here. Uh, I think that's pretty much covered as a rough base coat. A rough base coat. Is that on camera? Yes. Uh, rough base coat. Now, apologies, I've not been chatting with you much because I really can't look at the chat while I'm doing this. So, my apologies. So, I don't need to do inside that hatch because that's going to be a different colour. I'm not painting the dude just yet. But I shall get some more paint on the inside of that. Paint the bit that's around him like his bits of the tank interior. A little bit of paint on there, Mark. Just a bit more. And when you are brush painting, especially over black, don't panic if your first coat is a bit streaky streaky. That's fine. That's no problem at all. If your first coat is a little bit streaky, that's where you just go in later on when it's dried, after a minute or two, with another coat of paint to basically fill in all the gaps very rare that a paint will cover over black with the first coat that's where you've seen me doing the body I've gone over it and then I've come back and gone over it again it's very rare that any paint will cover with one coat so don't panic too much if you're you're getting streakiness on the first coat that's absolutely fine it's absolutely fine uh, so we'll just go one little blap with the big brush on there little blap of that tiny touch of water I'm gonna get some paint underneath I'm not too worried about getting paint underneath I need to keep it thin here because this is obviously where it's underneath and in contact with the hull so if I put far too much paint on here it's just gonna gouge and scrape off so I need to keep this thin so this really is like a dry brush you're not really gonna see this it's just a hint of color I'll probably just leave it like that and not do any more under there now because it, it'll look just as long as it looks greenish and a little bit dark, that's fine as far as I need to go. So I should put that. Uh, I shall. Oh, I shall put that there. I shall mount this on a stick. Mount it on a stick. Let it dry for a minute over here. Uh, okay, quick look at the body. Do I need to touch anything? I've got a big scratch there that I didn't notice. Somehow I've scratched the paint. You spoon. We go nicely nicely that's there that's there that's looking pretty good uh, that's not bad at all any really I'm just looking for any really obviously bald patches that need to be dealt, dealt with uh, maybe just a little bit around the missile tiniest amount of water far too much water you spoon my tissue and stuff's off the wrong side. Tiniest amount. Get it on there. Get it on there. Try and stick to one direction. Now it doesn't look like it when I'm doing this, but I'm also trying to do long brush strokes. Rather than stabbing the paint, I'm trying to do as long brush stroke as I can. It look when I'm doing it fast, it looks like I'm just jabbing away, but I'm not. I'm actually trying to make long brush strokes. Again, that's just a way to spread the paint out. Because that paint was a little thin, I can spread it out over the body a bit. It just helps fill in some gaps. So I think that's good for a base coat on there. I think we're good on that. I'm gonna put that to one side. Give that little brushy brush a rinse. And then we shall see what I need a swig of coffee 
and we shall see how many hundreds of lines of chat I've actually missed. Uh, let's have a look. Swig. Right, so let's have a look at chat. Do, 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 do. Wow, I've missed a lot of chat. <laughs> Sunday, so Ted's probably on the gin, says Dave. Um, somebody's asking about Fox's thing when he leans forward. It's my uh, my my helmet of seeing. It's my visor. It's got a sharp mouth on it. I had to go and do some painting in my local Warhammer store. And I'm acutely conscious that I'm a 47-year-old bloke sat in a games workshop store painting. Looks a bit weird at the best of times. So... What I decided to do, well, I just want to paint that dozer blade again. I might do some more paint on that dozer blade. Um, what I decided to do was at least, because I have to wear this to see what I'm doing, I could at least paint my visor, put a funky design on it to maybe, you know, make it a little less, a little more youthful. So I painted uh, shark mouth and shark eyes on it just to give it a bit. So it didn't look quite like the sort of, you know, sad middle-aged bloke painting his toy soldiers in a, in a games workshop store, which is kind of a bit sad, really, when you think about it at my age in public so yes i thought i'd just youth myself up a little bit now, apologies if it keeps coming into shot it's very difficult for me to know where to put the camera so i can see things but you don't just get the top of my head in shot all the time right i don't need that to be a good coat of paint so that should be fine needs to look scruffy on the dozer blade put that there uh, right Wait, I'll start rest in chat. Blanca Blanca says, oh, that looks way better than my both wash and yet still goopy mess. What is the Tamiya Citadel paint variant of AK Interactive British Sand Yellow, says Jamie Bone. Um, Tamiya is probably Desert Tan. I think it's a Desert Tan, something similar. Sand Yellow for Citadel, there's quite a few. You've got... Um, Carrack Stone is one, off the top of my head. Uh, you've got some very light colours like Screaming Skull and a Shabti Bone there, kind of sandy colours. Uh, you have Talon Sand, which is a nice sandy colour. What else have we got? I've got another sitting around in this pile. Uh, we have, of course, uh, Zandri Dust, which is a good sand colour. Uh, there's also... Um, Zamisi Desert, which is a nice sort of warmer sand colour. There's quite a few. Quite a few. You spies an APC. Don't you dare confuse a Chimera with a Lehman Russ. What? This is Chimera. It's an APC. It's not a Lehman Russ. It's kind of similar to a Lehman Russ, but it's not. <laughs> it's got tracks. I spies a tank, says Chris the Pyro. Oh, you spies an APC. There we go. I see. Right. Pascal Leaver says, also, I was first, but always that early that others don't see the message anymore. Same for Nim. I did I did wonder. Uh, how is a Chimera not an armoured personnel carrier? Torox may be something else, but a Chimera, yeah. It's, it's basically designed to have dudes that come out the back, and it just happens to have some guns and a turret. But it is, it's an armoured personnel carrier. It's just got a big door at the back for all the dudes to fall out. And by fall out, I mean, you know, pile out. Dad's in. Welcome, Dad. Uh, let's have a look. What's chat doing? Wait, is Fox saying longer? Ted's always with us in spirit. Uh, what does he have a shark mouth? Okay, to wet the, the visor. Uh, Spid is in. Welcome, Spid. Hello, peoples. Earl D is in. Welcome, Earl D. Uh, mm -mm. Okay. Blanca Blanca says, sounds really creepy sexual. Do not like, ooh, my area. Yeah, it was a flute sound called, ooh, my area. I can't remember what the, the software synth was called now. Uh, Bory Models asks, he's thinking of getting an Ender 2 3D printer. Is it worth getting? Asking Spit. I have no idea about 3D printers. Mm-hmm. Somebody was late and is getting told off being heretic. Uh, James Lorimer, I think, was late. 
Uh, Blanca Blanca says, if you can't paint an acrylic because of a rifle, relocate the said arm to the top of the miniature head. Feed, easy to fit, easy fix. Um, I actually, I prefer to put all the arms on and then paint them. It's, it, I will leave arms off if I have to. Um, I'd have no problem getting a brush in there to paint an acrylic. But when I was doing like my Tempesta Scions, because they've got that stupid two-part arm where you've got the forearm and the elbow and it's two different pieces, you can't build the arm separately without gluing it to the body because you need to make sure the cable for the, for the, the last gun or the hotshot volley gun actually joins up. So I had to glue the arms on and to get into the trim on the chest, but it's actually not that bad. Space Hamsters at H's in. Hey guys, what's cooking? Doodle 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 doodle. Uh, James is on the naughty step for some reason, but I'm not sure why. Do the watercolors not reactivate the ink? Says Rusting Customs about when I was talking about doing, drawing cartoon art. Um, no, once an ink's dried, it's it's fine. Um, I used to use a, a, a paper, very expensive paper, designed for watercolors, called Arches. Well, it's spelt Arches, but it's pronounced Larche, L-A-R-C-H-E, or L apostrophe A-R-C-H-E, Arches in French. And it was very expensive and very nice cartridge paper or special. It wasn't actually made of paper, it was made of cotton. And it was designed specifically for, uh, to be able to watercolour on, so that when you put loads of watercolours, it didn't buckle up like cartridge paper. And it always smelt like wet dog. It was amazing. You'd do a really complex picture with all the artwork and the ink and the... And it smelled like wet dog. It was great. Very expensive, that paper. <sighs> you can't bring a pineapple. Gagging for coffee, Fox, says Dad. Um... Uh, James has got some sad news. Fairly unpleasant news. I lost my favourite cat this week. Though he ran off. Thought he ran off. Someone found a cat that was nearly identical in behaviour. As he was solid black. But it was the wrong cat. I'm sorry to hear that James. Uh, the good thing with cats is if cats do run away. They tend to just uh, survive by running away to someone else's house. We used to have a cat. And it would live about four doors down most of the day. <laughs> it goes to this guy down the street. It, we lost it for about two weeks. And we realised it just moved into the house down the road. And it would sometimes come back and, and eat here. And then sometimes it would live there. They're fairly self-surviving. It'll be it'll be somewhere and well fed. Uh, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Dad mentions fish finger butties. Mm. Uh, David Butts model says you're right. It's coat d'arm is the paint that used to be Games Workshop's paints before they rebrand redid them. Uh, Cy Reynolds says that's correct. Fox again about coat d'arm. Um, and interestingly, Vallejo Game Color were formulated for Games Workshop, but they pulled out, so Vallejo went ahead and released them themselves. Yeah, I like the Vallejo or Vallejo Game Color, but I find them to be a little bit, um, I don't know, the shiny. They're a bit waxy and shiny, and some of the metallics are a pig to get on. But I do like them. Uh, what else is happening? Christopher C is in. Welcome, Christopher C. Do -do -do. Everybody's saying hello. Uh, what's chat doing? Anybody live in Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury? If so, any of the model shops sell Tamir rattle cans. Uh, that's the thing. I, I often wonder whether it is actually Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury. I've always said Shrewsbury. Apparently it depends which side of the river you live on, whether it's Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury. Uh, let's have a look. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, you could, of course, OLD, just go to emodels.co.uk, my channel sponsors. They sell to me rattle cans, or they usually have them in stock. Uh, you can also get them in Hobbycraft. Hobbycraft sell them. John Kenwood, I've just had three footy games cancelled, so I'm down three to 450 quid in wages. Sorry to hear that, John. What do you do? Swings and roundabouts, though, he says. Uh... What else is happening? I think I've caught up with the chat now. Paul Di Tommaso is in. What have I missed? I don't know. <laughs> I've been I've been painting. I've got my base colour down on me Chimera. Uh, John che John Kenwood. I'm the chef. You're my best friend. Anybody that makes food that I can eat with my face is my best friend. Because I'm allergic to cooking, but I love eating. So yeah. <laughs> right. What I'm going to do? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the shade uh, coat now. So we've got the base colour down. We have the basic green colour. I'm going to give it a quick blast with the hairdryer. 
So what I shall do is, while I blast it with the hairdryer, so you're not sitting there listening to me blasting it with the hairdryer, I shall be back in one moment. Yeah, there's supposed to be music there. There was, there totally wasn't music there. Oh. Oh, right, give me a sec. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just do it. Hang on. Da da da! Music, music is what you're listening to. This is music from my face. Face music. Music of the mouth. Right, I'll do the turret as well. Face music. Music, music, music. Interesting music. There you go. Right, so that's those two done. Did you like my music? Yeah, yeah I need to sort that music out on that back soon bit. It didn't work. <laughs> Special. Right, so you can see here, hopefully, uh, the bottom of the turret, which has got one quick cursory coat of paint. That's, that's fine. That's all I need. Because when it goes on here, you're never really going to see it anyway. I'm not going to get it on now, but you're never really going to see it anyway. But if I put too much on, it's going to end up too thick with paint. And it's going to take all the paint off. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to put it on there yet, because we need to do some dry brushing. But once it's on there, you're hardly going to see any of that. So that's fine. I don't really care about that. Again, if this was a display piece, I'd be going all the whole hog, because it's going to be a tabletop playing game, a tabletop model. It just needs to look good from above. So... Uh, Daddy's eating Marmite crisps. I tell, gotta tell you, and I get the feeling this is the same for everybody in the boom hut lately. All I've thought about for the last week and a bit is Marmite. Oh. It's just, and I know exactly who to blame. <laughs> right, so I need to wash those later. I'll put them to one side. Next, we have uh, it's going to be the messy time. So I need to get a bit of newspaper. If I can find one, I got. Yeah. Do do do. Zzz. Do 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 bit of newspaper. Let's have a look at the local news. Local news, local news. It's the news from your area. Pet detectives are on the case. I'm sure they are. Right. Now it's messy fun times. Shading times. What we're going to do, the colour scheme that I'm using, if you just to remind you, uh, is why does my phone keep doing that? Get off. Uh, is moss, moss green, which is that. But I'm actually kind of customizing this a bit. What I'm going to do before we get to the point of doing that color scheme is I need to do my post shading. So we've got the base color down. I need to now do the shading part to put shadowing in there. And then once the shadowing's on there and dry, we can then work the color back and start getting the highlights back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the good old Nuln oil. Nuln. It's a good shake. Shaking, 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 shaking. I'm going to use my dad device. My holy, holy device of opening and holding. And this is where everything now gets messy as anything. And what I need is something to put this thing on. I'm going to get myself a little plastic cup. And that is going to sit on that and fall over. I would suspect probably pretty much going to fall over. I'm going to put that on there. That's where all planning comes in, you see. Asking for trouble. Yes, we are. That's fine. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply some gloves because this is going to get V-messy. And I don't want to be getting fingerprints everywhere. Hang on, let me just put this lid back on for a minute. What we shall do. Eh. Ah, can't get the gloves out. Uh, oh. I've got blue gloves now. I ran out of gloves, so I've got some more in the blue. And they're large and smaller than the other large ones I had. They're a bit tight. Eh. There's no bet detectives here. I don't like Marmite, says Jamie Bone. Banned. You don't like Marmite because you've not eaten enough of it. If you eat enough, you'll like it eventually. Fox, you know of any good model shops in the northwest of England, or do you get all your supplies online, says uh, Cynical Mank? Um, pretty much no. My model shop of choice when I was a kid was um, Walton's in Altrincham. It's still there, but unless you really want Humbrol paint, 
or airfix or model railways or remote control stuff it's not really worth going to anymore uh, I need a base I need a shade brush of some sort this one will do um, yeah that I can't I just online nowadays for me there just aren't any around anymore not really worth any salt not worth their salt unfortunately that's the way it is uh, get that shade brush as well uh, that's confusing right so what we're going to do is not use that brush actually because that's the wrong one this is the boring bit where I have to fiddle around finding brushes now do 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 that one will do so it's time to shade so what we're going to do is quite simply just get messy uh, yeah, I thought as much. Cheers, Fox, says Cynical Mac. Yeah, there's just not many around. Just go for online. I say, I'm sponsored by emodels.co.uk, and they are really good. That brush is rock hard solid. <laughs> not been used for a while. I'm going to give that brush a rinse first. Let's get it, get it softened up a little bit. Now, when it comes to doing shades, this is play time. Play time. So, when you're doing shades, don't ponce about, just get it on. Now you see here, I'm not going to be careful at all. I'm not even going to be on camera at all either. I'm not going to be careful in any way, shape or form. My, my mission here is to get the shade on the model. Now I will try and be careful and avoid it pooling up anywhere, because that's what I don't want. I'm going to try and avoid this bit, which I've just got some on as well. Get that off. Hang on. Do, 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 do. Get it off there. I don't want it on that cupola bit. Uh, I'm trying to going to help help it move around and not pull up. But the trick here is I actually need more than all because I'm running low on all now. I'll be perfectly honest. It's just to get it on because this is going to be my shadow cut. I don't really need it on that missile, but I'll put it on there anyway. Because don't forget, a lot of this won't end, actually end up green. This will all end up other colours. So this is really just going to be the shadowy coat for the whole. So we'll get some on there. Slap it all over. What do we do, Ted? Oh, he's not here. Slap it on. That's what we do, Ted. Good lad. So again, I'm not being careful, not being delicate. I'm just slathering it everywhere. And yes, you will get brush marks and mess and just avoid pooling up. The only reason I'm avoiding pooling up is because if it does pool up, that's actually a lump of the of the shade in that case. And it, it's physical lump. You can feel it and it's visible. I don't mind patchiness, you know, watermarks, but I don't want physical lumps of shade piling up. That's what I'm trying to avoid nothing to hold on to here uh, and the reason I put paper down well I don't need to explain that do I really <laughs> I think it's fairly obvious why I've put paper down I think you know most people can figure that one out do 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 shading 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 this thing lovely lovely nice Right, lovely, that is. Right, I've got to find something to hold on to to this side. It's finding bits to hold on to now. That's the, the challenge. Get that there. I'm not worried about the tracks yet. They'll be painted later on, so I'm not too worried about those. Do, 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 do. Now, if you were just doing this green base coat and then doing this shade, just to, and that was it, then you wouldn't do this because you wouldn't want all the patchy, uneven brush marks from the shade and stuff like that. You'd be trying to avoid that. However, that's not part of my plan. Uh, my plan is more complex than that. And what I need to do now is find some way to uh, do something. I need to, mm, yes, <laughs> somehow shade all, all the surfaces whilst retaining something to hold on to. So my plan is That this will this will really just this isn't a shade to change the colour. This is a shade just to give me some shaded areas, some shadowing. Uh, this is reproducing what I would do if I was doing a proper pre-shade coat with an airbrush. So by the time we finish this, you probably most of this null oil effect will have vanished, and you won't really see any of it. 
apart from in corners here and there. The odd nook and cranny might have some evidence of this. So there we go, that's nice and messy. And that's also why this isn't yet using the, the, the green Ethonian camo shade that you use for this green colour. Because again, this is just a shadowing effect. I'm not looking at the colour yet. We are going to end up going back over this, most of this, with the base green colour. Which I've forgotten what it was. I shall turn them out. I've already forgotten because I'm an idiot. Je suis spèche. Hey, do you want to know a weird fact? Do you want to know something really, really weird? Do you want to know what's in my pocket right now? <laughs> I don't, it's nothing rude. It's something very weird, though. In my pocket right now, I have about 35 francs and about, I don't know, 40 or 50 centimes old French coins. I was clearing out some coins of the day and just found all these French coins. I'm like, what? Why have I, why have I still got those? So I've got a whole lot of old French money in my pocket for, just because I've not found somewhere to put it yet. I've not thrown it away yet. Or Because I was like, those don't look like proper coins. What are those? Oh, wow, they're old French coins. Wow, that is old. It's got a lot of old French, old French pre-Euro money in my pocket. There you go, see? Right, now this one, I need to... Get this puppy on here first, because I need to hold it with that. I need to give this and shake. May bite the bullet and get a can of lead belcher, says Earl D. Lead belcher's a good colour, man. Scott Sutherland's in. Yay! I know only that because Dave Butcher, uh, Dave Butcher, that model, says, Yar for Odin. Scott Sutherland, our very good friend from Orkney, all the way up north. He's the most northern of all of you. Whoever you are, none of you will ever be more northerly than Scott. Unless you're Parkinson, in which case he's the most northern thing there is. Michael Parkinson's more northern than everybody. I'm off camera, aren't I? Where's my camera now? I've got to kind of work around this thing on a cup now. Uh, so we're going to get the shade on here. Now it's pooling up inside that lid there. And I don't want that because that's going to be a different colour anyway. So what I need to do is get myself some tissue. And just work that. Uh, oh, Blanco, Blanco. I think three hours 25 is good a time as any to call it quits. See you next week. Stay safe. And pineapple protects. Thanks for coming in, Blanco. Nice to see you again. See you again next week. Always nice when you come in. Nice to get our Australian upside down contingent in the house. Get a bro. That was actually New Zealand. Not. Never mind. Moving on. Do 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 do. So when you're doing this, like I say, you don't need to be too careful. I'm using a big, massive brush here to put the shade on. I'm not being prissy with it. I'm not being arty-farty. I'm just getting the shade on there. But always make sure it's not pulling up. You don't want lumps. If you leave a shade to pile up in a corner, it, it just becomes this sticky, gooey mess. And when it dries, it just, it just becomes this lump of shade that you can see a mile away. And to get it off is just it's impossible. It's not going to happen. So try and avoid it pooling up. I'll put some shade on this bottom bit, but that's as much as I'm going to do there. Just avoid it pooling up. If it does pool up, just shuffle it around with a brush or like a, there a bit of tissue just to get it out again. Be interesting to see how this vehicle comes out because this is my test pig vehicle. This is the one I'm going to test the colour scheme on to see if it works. So I'm actually writing down the colours I'm using. I'm, I've written them down with my pen and everything in my book of words. So I can look at it and say, here are the colours what I used for this colour scheme. All right, so that is there. That's pretty much done. Let's get some on that. I'm getting too much on there. All right, so I'll get this done. I shall put this over to one side to dry a little. Give me a brush as a quick rinsey rinse. 
and then we should do some more chat and stickeries, I think. I don't think we'll get much done today. It's quite funny, really, how, like on the E-Models Christmas stream, I'll get a whole tank painted in four hours because I'm not sitting there looking at chat all day. But when, when it's the Sunday stream and I'm hanging out with you guys, I don't get that much done. I don't get that much done. <laughs> yeah, not really. That shade's going to take a while to dry. Uh, the one thing I've learned with shades, by the way, is sometimes you want them to dry quickly and the temptation is to just hair dry them. I have actually found that you don't really want to hair dry shades if you can avoid it, especially when you've put them on like that really thick. Uh, because it does tend to speed up the drying process, but that means again, it kills them, it stops them flowing around. So if you have got a little bit of a build up on an edge, for example, and you go in with the hair dryer, normally the, the, the shade will sort of move around and flatten out a little bit, but it doesn't do that when you hair dryer it. So you don't want to, you don't really want to dry hair shades with a hair dryer. Put those gloves off. Just because you risk end up, like I was saying about having big lumps of shade that you don't really want. So try and avoid that if you can. Right, so these are brushes I need to wash later. So I need to put them to one side somewhere. I should put them over there so I don't have to wash them. Uh, I'll put them there. there we go. Right, let's have a quick look at the chat and see what we're doing. Uh, swig of the coffees. Mmm, the coffee. Nom, 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 nom. Coffee happiness. Uh... Want it for my Sazabi in a frame, says Earl D, for lead belcher. Um, depends. Are you making a nice, clean, shiny gun, uh, Sazabi, or a weathered, battered one? Because lead belcher works best when it's painted on, and then you've got null oil over the top or other shades, and then it's got stuff on top of it. It is by itself, either brushed or airbrushed, quite a grainy colour. So it's not the most amazing thing for nice, clean, metallic looks. To be honest, if you're looking for a nice, clean, shiny Sazabi, if, if you're looking at either, not the main bits of, look at that. If you mean just like the shiny bits of the frame, where it's got the odd piece that's all shiny and metallic looking, um, check out things like some of the um, Vallejo metal colours. There's a load of different shades of different, there's like steel and dual aluminium and jet exhaust and pale burnt exhaust and things like that. Uh, it's the Vallejo acrylic metal colour or just Vallejo metal colour. They are some of the finest pigment paints I have ever come across. For example, if you if you like brush on most metallics, they're a bit grainy and there's a texture to them. Or even if you airbrush them, like, you know, some of the Tamiya... Um, to me, acrylic um, metal colours are terrible because they've got massive grain in them. The, the fleck is huge. Uh, but this is wobbling. I don't like that. Hang on. But, stay there. But the acrylic, the Vallejo ones, they're almost, for some of them, the grain is almost invisible. The, 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 the pigment. So you can brush them on and, and more often than not though as long as you, you what's underneath them is nice and smooth they can look really nice but airbrushed on they can look fantastic and then gloss varnish over the top whatever you want to do with them um so i would say if you want a really shiny sort of not chrome effect but if you want nice shiny bright metallics maybe some of the the metal colors and then on the edges perhaps rub in some uh you know graphite for that extra ting that extra zing of the metal um or you go, you can put C1 metalized buffing powder over the top of them, and that gives you a nice shiny, really shiny metallic color. But yeah, most metallics are kind of really grainy. The Citadel ones are really, really good. Uh, but if you're looking for a clean metallic lead belcher, it's not really designed for that. Uh, Earl D says, want a dark base, then paint shiny little details. Um, don't own an airbrush, got C1 as well. Okay, um, what you could do, Here's what you could do if you, if you want it to look, if it's looking nice and clean and shiny, then something like something like Stormhouse Silver is a bit finer and shinier. Uh, or there is another one, uh, Runefang Steel is actually a bit brighter and shinier than Lead Belcher. Lead Belcher really works worse when it's painted on and then put a shade over the top. And then with something else painted over the top, Lead Belcher works best as the metallic base on which to put other shinier metallics, if, if that makes sense. Uh, right, where are I? Hang on. 
Uh, hey, Carl will be in soon. Stickers, Carl. Sticker. Yeah, hey, Carl. If you're not, if you're watching, where are you? Do do do. Uh, Dad says, Jarella, minimum, 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 minimum. James Lorimore says, a Swedish man dropped his wooden shoes in the toilet. He clogged the toilet. I'll be over here. It's Dutch that have the clogs, not the Swede. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So I would say, I would say actually, LD, yeah, I would say personally, uh, if you've got, they're not the Mecca colours, but if you haven't got any of these, yeah, for little details, if you want really shiny details that really pop, something like Duraluminium, which is really shiny, or, or, uh, Pale, what's it called, Pale something or other, Duraluminium is a really bright colour, or, oh, where's it gone now, I've got to find it now, Pale Burnt Metal, that's a really nice bright, that works as, a, as an accent colour for metallics. The trick is to have a slightly duller, darker colour underneath <coughs> and then paint that on the, the highlights and the edges so it really pops, so you get a nice contrast. That's going to take a while to dry, this thing over here. So let's do some stuff. I am going to get the stickers out because I forgot to get those. Sticker times. Oh, sticker times. Right, where are they? Here we go. We get a selection of the stickerings. We have, as always, things off camera because I've put the tank in a place that I can't put anything else. Brilliant. I can't move this now. Let's move. Oh, I don't want to get anything at all on my new cutting mats because they're clean. And I, yes. So we have scaly models. I'll zoom out a bit. There's an idea. Why not just zoom out your spoon? Do you know? There we go. Simpleton, aren't I? I'm an utter simpleton. Model making guru, another model maker. We have three stickers today. I should get the magic pen of words. Magic pen of words. And I shall write my usual three words on the back. Uh, I shall write. Um, I shall write. Uh, bubbles. I tried to go for flumpy words. Bubbles. Blip. And on this one, I shall write. Um, it's not a real word. Preble. <laughs> so got bubbles, blip, and preble. Which are two model making gurus and a scaly models. So, what we're going to do, we're going to do the usual. So, before we do anything, as you know by now, you know how this works. Um, by this point, the audio and the video are actually out of sync for most of you. So there'll be a noticeable lag. So what I need to do before we do anything is refresh the browser and drag the slider. So refresh and drag the slider across. Just refresh and drag. Refresh and drag. To do that now, I will get another sticker out because Scale Model Vamp reminded me there is a new word we discovered that we came up with the other day that I could have written down. So I'm going to do another Scaly Models sticker. Because it's a word that I've used for many years and I've only taught it to you yesterday in yesterday's stream, which none of you knew, which is Spong. Spong was a word that I made up in my brain for when somebody hits you, they go Spong, or you hit with a frying pan or something, or you just, you know, Spong them on the head. Unfortunately, it's really hard to say somebody got Sponged because it looks like sponged and it, somebody got sponged on the head. What is that bad? I don't know. So Spong is like an onomatopoeia word. Spong! Like, oh, look at that spider. Give it a good Spong with the bottom of your shoe. That kind of thing. So we've got an extra one. Uh, Scale Model Vamp. Hey, Dad. Hey, James. Hey, guys. Yes, welcome. Welcome, Scale Model Vampage. Kapow, says John Kenwood. Thongs. Oh, that's a good word, actually. Right, so, as everybody now, refresh the browser and drag this. I've got to be careful of this. Refresh and drag. I'm going to have a swig of coffee. And then I shall check the email of emailings. Uh, I need to load that in. While I'm loading my email, just a reminder for everybody, if you've not watched this stream before, 
Um, if you'd like to help support this channel, because this is what I do for a living, and I count on my supporters to keep me paying my bills and keep me, you know, in food, so I don't die of starvation. Uh, if you would like to support this channel, there's several ways you can do it. Uh, the easiest and simplest and cheapest way is just to like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and when you watch a video, keep an eye on the advert. Let the advert run all the way through. It really helps me out. I know it's a pain in the bum for like a 30, 40 second advert, but just let the advert play all the way through. And that helps me out because I get a little bit of revenue from that. Uh, you can also, if you're looking to buy muddling supplies uh, and you're going to pop onto Amazon to get some primer or a brush or whatever, don't just go to Amazon. On my videos, at the bottom of my videos, in the description below, there's a link to my Amazon store and lots of items that are in there. It's not everything in the world, but I've got a selection of stuff that goes through my Amazon store. It doesn't cost you any extra, but if you order through any of those links and the stuff you need, it makes me a little tiny bit of income on that as well, a little bit of commission. So if you need, you know, uh, some master's brush cleaner or uh, a uh, rattle can of something or other, that, go and have a look. And just before you go onto Amazon and buy it, have a look in my little Amazon store, link down below in the description, and just have a look and see if it's there. If it is, use that link to add it to your basket. It just helps me out because I make a little tiny bit. So that would be brilliant. Last of all, of course, if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, uh, you can do. It's patreon.com forward slash model making guru. Uh, I utterly, utterly depend on my wonderful, wonderful patrons to keep me going. They are my income. They are my source of income. Uh, there's various benefits to being a patron. You get various uh, early access to lots of videos and other things and bits and bobs. And the top tier patrons uh, get a Warhammer kit of their choice built and painted to a professional standard. So there you go. If you ever wanted some kit done, become a top level patron. And after 12 months, I will take pretty much any Warhammer model you want. Uh, although I do specialise in vehicles. Uh, and paint it to not to this standard, not to this standard, because this is quickly done for the tabletop. I mean, professional airbrush powders, all kinds of goodness. So yeah, there's lots of options. Go and check it out. Uh, and last of all, don't forget, we've still got the stream boss battle uh, going here. Uh, if you want your chance to win two to three hundred quids worth of Warhammer and or Forge World stuff, make sure you're doing your super chats, the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat, or the tip jar, which is here, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru, um, to help get Aviad's health bar down from 70, what is it, 72,000 something or other? I can't see from here. Um, whoever gets him to zero will win whatever's in the pot from the super chat and the tips. All the money goes into a pot and you win that pot and I order whatever you want from the Warhammer or the Forge World store. The Aviad is in Israel, just so you know, and he ordered a load of stuff and it got there in three days from Games Workshop. He said, this is what I want. I ordered it. There you go. Done. So if you want the chance, give it a go. Right. So let's have a look. Uh, I need to go into email. Do -do 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 emails. Uh, we have no questions to ask, so I shall make up some questions in my enormous brain of making things up. Uh, let's think of some interesting facts. Okay. Here's a question. You'll have to Google this one. Everybody ready? Um, I, give me, I in my head, I have two words. Uh, now, both of these words are words that are used to describe the same thing. And I want the first person to give me one of these words. It's, I need the name for something, but there are actually two different words. I want the word or the name for, if you look under a champagne or a wine bottle, there's that concave bit. What is that called? Go. First one to get. I've got two words in my head. Either If you put either of those words in your first one, you will win a sticker. It's called a hmm or a hmm. Both words could be applied to sports. Uh, Pascal Leaverse is first, strangely enough, <laughs> uh, with punt. Yes, it's also is known as a kick or a punt. Kick being a football term, punt being a baseball term. Uh, but it's, yes, it's known as a kick or a punt. So, Pascal, well done. You've won yourself a sticker. So, let me know which one you want. Do you want preble, spong, blip, or bubbles? Or do you want scale your models or a model making guru? We'll all sit here now quietly and just stare at you until you tell me which one you want. We're staring at you now. We're looking at you. We're staring at you. Everybody stare at Pascal. Everybody look at the moon. Okay, right, Pascal wants the spong. Well done. So I shall write Pascal. Pascal. Yeah, yes, I spelled it. I missed out your eye. 
I can spell your name. I just missed an eye out. So there you go, Pasco. Well done. All you need to do is uh, send me an email to. It's hard to see there. Fox at modelmakingguru.com and just say, hey, Fox, I want a scaly model sticker and I'll have it there in my pile. Uh, note to everybody, by the way, if you didn't watch the stream, I think the other night, all of you in the UK who are waiting for stickers, they have now been sent out about three or four days ago. Apart from two for scale model vamp and muse, which are going to dad first. I've got to send them tomorrow. So all of you in the UK should have your stickers by now or we'll be waiting for them to arrive in the next day or two. Um, if you're outside the uk i haven't had chance to post stickers out yet because my car's off the road and i have to go to the post office so i've, I've not had a chance to go and post those i've gone back a few weeks now these stickers if you uh want to claim your sticker just drop me an email even if you're waiting for stickers and you've already mailed me 14 times mail me again because every time i see a mail from you saying i need this sticker if i've got five emails from you saying are you a, a, a model making you a sticker i know to send you five stickers so there you go right uh, Pascal still has paint on his mat. <laughs> yeah, Pascal will have that paint on his mat forever. Pascal was in our live stream last night for the uh, for the group build, and he was mixing the paint on his cutting mat, and it was Humbra or crappy paint or Ravel crappy, one of the two. That will be there forever. Right, next question. Let's think of another question. <clears throat> I need to think of a fact now. Um. Okay. We're talking ants. Ants are brilliant. I love ants. Ants are fantastic. Thanks, ants. Thanks. There is an official name for ants that grow wings and fly off. To, the male ants that fly wings and grow off, fly off to mate. What is that name? Go. It's also in emotion, sort of. But there is a, a proper name for flying ants. The ones that fly off to breed, and I think it, I think it's usually males. I could be wrong, but I think it's usually males. Where else do you ever watch a Warhammer stream and get asked questions about ants? Tart says spit. <laughs> you tart. You tart. Emo ants. <laughs> Not quite. And good. Flappy Widge ant. No. Apple crisps. No. Doodle do 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 termites. That's not an ant. Ant man. No. On a side note, you should all go and subscribe to Ants Canada. It's a fantastic channel. He was in Roxy Music, LD. <laughs> I guess it may be some of you might not get this. Doodle doo doo. Happy ants. Well, strangely enough, James Lauren, that's another right answer, but it kind of the word that is is relevant to that. So you're on the right path. It's not got the right answer. Marmite says Stefan last. Tell Stefan. Uh, Cynical Mank spells it wrong, I think, but guess it right. Elates. It might be right, actually. I've never actually looked at the spelling. He says elates. Yes, they are elates. Hence, if you th think of it, elates, it's a bit like happy. So there you go. So yes, well done, Cynical Mank. Elates. You've won yourself a sticker. Uh, we shall now all sit and look at you quietly while you choose which sticker you would like. Did it. Did it. Everybody stare at Cynical Mank. Get in, only my fourth stream. We're still waiting for you to choose a sticker. Nothing happens now until you decide. Everything stops. Preble, please. Oh, God, which one's that one there? Uh, Preble. <laughs> okay, excellent. Got Cynical Mank. Lovely, lovely. So I just need you to send me an email to fox at modelmaking... I need to not make that white, really. Fox at modelmakingguru.com. Just give me your name. Obviously, give me your name and address. I need to know where to send it. Uh, and that you've won a Model Making Guru sticker. And I'll get that one sent out to you. Two left. Right. Damn it, so close. Yes, you said happy ants. And it's like, well, if you pronounce it as elate, as lates, then technically it is. Right. Uh... <coughs> I've got to think of something now. Um, okay, I'm going to give you... Wow, what was that? My words just all fell over. I'm going to give you a Google question. Are we ready? Everybody stand by. What colour... Here we go. It's fastest finger this one, it really is. Unless you just happen to know this. What colour is Ammo by Mig Paint 
AMIG 097. Go. Am I by MIG paint? AMIG 097. What colour is that? Preble. Preble. Osric 9000 just shouts grey, but could have just looked it up first. It's not the right answer. <laughs> Blip and bubbles. This is purely, unless you happen to know, it's purely a Google question. A sky blue pink. What kind of colour is that? Gunmetal. You're all just guessing. Take you two seconds to Google it. I've just given you the code. <laughs> it's AMIG 097. How can you go wrong? Take literally as long as it would take you to type MIG 097. Mm -mm. Doodle doodle doodle. Ah, Pascal almost there, but I need the specific. I need the specific name. A slightly off green. Widge flesh tone, says David Butch. So don't you start with the widge. As it's a Google only question, I do expect the full colour name, please. Did it, did uh, Pascal Leoverse is a strange again. First with crystal orange. There you go. Crystal orange. How hard was that? And I know Dad, I know Dave's not allowed to enter because again. All you get to do is look up that. I'll have to type it in and get done. There you go. There you go. No problem. Honestly, I'm just guessing. I don't know. You're all crazy people. But I love you anyway, but you're all crazy people. Uh, so, Pascal, you can now have... I'm going to guess. Which one would you like? I'm going to guess... You, you tell me which one you want, Pascal. Do, 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 do. This is going to be another one of these people that wins, like, each sticker each time, aren't you? You're going to be like, have you had the others who win, like, 15 stickles? Stickles? Stickers. Uh, everybody just sit quietly now and wait for Pascal to decide. Scale models, it there you go. I knew you'd choose that one, Pascal. There we go. So, yeah, so send me uh, if you haven't sent the first email yet, say that you want to you know which stickers, say both of them in the same email, it's fine. Uh, uh, hang on, hang on. You do realize that's two scaly models ones you've got now, though. Just before I commit to that, you do realize that's two now you've got. Did you want one? Do you want two of those or one of each? It's entirely up to you. I'll, I'll put them both as that. But yeah, just drop me an email. Um, if you've not sent it yet, just say that you need both of those, two of those. Stickle is a word that must go on a sticker next week. <laughs> yeah, stickle, I like that. Stickle's got to go on it now. Blipstickle. Blipstickle. He says, Pascal says, good, good, like Mr. Burns, good. I would have two of yours. Blipstickle. <laughs> I like that now, blipstickle. Yeah, right, so we've got one sticker left. Uh, let's think of one more question. Um, ba -ba -bam, ba -ba -ba -bam, thinking of the question with my brain, which is not great. Uh, I've, got to think of, I've got to look around the room now for inspirations. Inspirations. I want a t-shirt that says stickles with a sticker being tickled. <laughs> Who remembers stickle bricks from their youth? Good God, stickle bricks, there's a thing. I remember in nursery school one day and in class, we had this big fight between half the class had stickle bricks and half the class had Lego. It was a big stickle brick versus Lego fight. We just threw them at each other. It was great. Teacher was obviously out of the room at the time. Uh, right. Question now. I've got to think of a question. Um, 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 um. Bum, 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 bum. Think of a question. Can't think of a question. Uh, 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 um, I'm going to look up a fact on the internet. Are we ready? I'm going to look up a random fact because my brain's not working. Random fact. Random fact. Go. Random fact. Well, I knew all of those, and they're not very interesting, so that's rubbish. Um, 
let's have a look. Here we go. Ready? This requires some Googling and some spelling. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's a question. It's a phobia, it's phobia time. Everybody ready? What is... I'm hoping that wasn't actually on camera then. What is the name of fear of being tickled by feathers? Go. It's one of the few phobia names that actually makes sense. Like Triskaidophobia, I think, is either bridges or clouds, but it doesn't mean anything. Whereas this one actually makes sense. The fear of being tickled by feathers. First one to get it right. So I'll just write Pascal on the back here, ready, in advance. <laughs> Yes, it was Pascal as well. I don't believe it. Just as I said that, shall I just write Pascal on this? He answered it. <laughs> ah, well done. <laughs> that's, that's just so ironic. Uh, yes, Tyrannophobia is the fear of being tickled by feathers. I shall prove it because there it is. Tyrannophobia. I can't believe as soon as I said, shall I just write Pascal on here? He answered it first. Oh, Pascal. Just because Aviad's not here, I don't know. So I shall write Pascal on that as well. So... Well done to just, you know, Pascal. And I've lost my pen. Where's my pen of happiness gone? I put my pen down. It's gone somewhere. I put it away, didn't I? Like a, like a spoon. I don't know. <laughs> Pascal. Again. Well done, Pascal. It's not the first time that somebody's burned their way through all the stickers in one episode. Fantastic. Well done. So if you've not sent that email yet, put that in there as well. <laughs> Uh, oh, I need to go eat now, guys. Sorry, see you in a bit. There he goes. He comes in, raids me for all my stickers, uh, and then just goes but like a panda. Eats, shoots, and leaves. Well done, Pascal. Thank you for coming in. Uh, see you again. Oh, that was funny. I've got a really tickly nose now. <laughs> Come on, I'll just write Pascal on this. Pink, there's the answer. Oh, dear. That was classic. That was classic. I had to open my big mouth, didn't I? I don't. <laughs> Vamp says lol Pascal is on a spawn today <laughs> Pro Warhammer Saturday tip If you watch Fox Ask Questions Do not use a laptop or your, or your cell Use your desktop PC and mouse Says Vamp <laughs> uh, Pascal says yeah I google for work As a programmer <laughs> Well there you go then Right uh, What is next We've done stickers Is this shade dry yet Let's find out Oh, not quite, not quite. See how it's all gathered up round here. Now, I didn't mind it pooling down here because that's going to be covered in dirt and stuff anyway. And it looks a bit patchy there. You can see on the... Let me zoom in a bit for you. Hang on. Dozer blade, dozer blade, does whatever a dozer blade does. So you can see here the finish, because of the shade, the finish is quite patchy and streaky. That's fine. I don't care. Really don't care about that. Because we've got a lot to do on top of this. That's going to be just to have the, the crap weathered out of it anyway. That's going to be all metallic colours and stuff. So I don't care about that. And on the rest of it you can see. Possibly it's quite a patchy scribbly mess. If you had no intention of doing anything else to it. That would look terrible. And I'd just slap you. Because that just looks like it's made of disease. However we've got a lot we need to do on this. That's not even anywhere near the end. So I need to let this dry for a bit more. So we need to entertain ourselves for another five or ten minutes somehow. Come on, dry faster. Uh, Lord Barclay says, I'm on my phone. <laughs> and James Lorimer says, I need I missed the question due to needing to wee. Yeah, you have to hold it in when it's sticker sticker time, you have to just wait. How's the turret doing? It's uh, lots of moisture areas still on here. This is the downside of doing painting live. When it comes to the shade, you kind of end up a bit knackered because you have to stop and wait for shade to dry. Yeah. So I can't really do much with that. So I can't do anything at the minute. That's a bit knackered now. I'm stumped. Nothing I can do now. So what I might do, what I might do, well, well there you go. What I'm going to do, while we're waiting, uh, I may as well clean these base brushes. I'm not going to use them again. So, let me go and get some warm water. I won't put you on the back in a minute thing, because there's no music on that. So give me one second. I'll leave the screen as it is right now. I'll just... I'll, uh, where's me... Hang on. Hang on. Uh, 
There you go. Back in the minute. Oh, it's <laughs> back in. It misses. Ah, oh, back in. Ah, minute. I could have done it by now. Just shut up. I'll back in a second. There we go. The time it took me to write that out, I could have just done it. So, I'll, just give these, I'll, I'll clean these brushes quickly while we've got nothing else to do. Because I can't paint anything while that shade is still drying. Boo! So, time for the old master's brush cleaner. Uh, Nim Cinderin says, I'm just missing a skipper's scale model sticker. And then he has the whole set. Uh, right, so... Time to clean some brushes then, chaps, chapesses. Where's my tissue gone? Not till the Foxmobile gets fixed, says Nim. Uh, wheel of giveaways, uh, says Paul. Uh, wheel of giveaways, uh, I've said before, and somebody actually, here's the thing for you. Somebody on YouTube put a comment on one of my videos saying, what's happened? Is the wheel of giveaways dead? But for some reason, YouTube tells me there's a comment and lets me read it, but when I try and go to the comment to reply, it doesn't work, so. Whoever that was, if you're watching, I can't reply to your comment for some dumbass reason. Um, yeah, the Wheel of Giveaways is on hiatus at the moment, purely because um, I can't afford to send out the prizes, quite simply. Because it's all big prizes right now. And the problem is, when I'm sending them out, it can be 30 or 40 quid to pop them out to you. The bigger ones, like, you know, kit, big kit boxes and stuff. And I... If it's in the UK, it might be cheap, but I can't guarantee who's going to win. So, right now, uh, it's on hiatus. It's just on hiatus. It's just for a bit. I'm still sort of getting myself sorted out. Plus, the Foxmobile is actually, like we said in the chat, the Foxmobile is actually off the road at the minute. And it's not a problem. I can get to the post office when I posted out the, uh, the uh, Strike Rouge to Jordan. I just walked to the post office. It's not the end of the world, but it's just a question of paying for the shipping i did uh, i did go to every couple of weeks with it for our purely for that reason because doing like four of them a month at 30 or 40 quid it was crippling me so right now at the minute it's just on hold i've got a big massive box full of all the prizes that will be given out but it's just i'm sort of on hold for the moment just because i've got bills to pay and food and, and unfortunately <clears throat> But I do love giving stuff away like that. I love doing it, so it frustrates me because I love doing the wheel of giveaways. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, ah. <laughs> oh. uh, Nim says he was missing a, a skipper scale model stickers, and Dad says one is on the way. Have you got Dad? Have you got Ted stickers, Dad? Uh, scale model vamp says if that happens the comment has been removed yeah that's what i thought because it shows up in my notifications there's a comment for you and i can read it but i can't reply to it so i guess whoever wrote it has had it re removed it but it was a fine question it's just like i, just, I wanted to say yeah it's just on hold at the minute <clears throat> uh Scale model vamp says, I also need skipper and scaly model pongs. I mean sticklers. <laughs> sticklers. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, uh, Wheel of Giveaways is just on hold. But I know you're all missing the, uh, I know you're all missing the thing, so. That didn't work. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? There you go. I, I know you're all missing that little musical flourish there. So it will return, don't worry. I just need to get myself sorted out. Because although although everybody thinks that doing YouTube makes you really rich, it really doesn't. It's just, it doesn't. Like I've said, this is my this is my living doing this. And I am ridiculously grateful to all my patron supporters because they help pay the bills and stuff. Um But it's it's still yeah, I earn I don't really go on about what I earn, but it's just about barely enough to live off at the moment. So, 
Uh, I'm not in any bad way, but it does mean things like posting out the prizes becomes a bit tricky. And I don't want to say, hey, you've won, and then spend six weeks saying, I've not sent it to you yet. So it will be back, don't worry. Get the Fox drone and pilot the prizes. <laughs> Wait, what? Get the Fox drone and pilot the prizes. Yeah, I don't think a drone will go to... Because whenever somebody wins a prize, they always live in, like, South America somewhere. Whenever I end up sending something, a big box or something, it's never, like, somebody down the road or, like, a town away. Whenever somebody wins, they're always in, like, Brazil or somewhere. It's like, oh! Oh, your dad's sending a load of stuff to Vamp, I think, aren't you? Or to Muse. One of the two. Uh, Dad, I have not yet sent you the stickers for Vamp and Muse. I shall do that. Uh, I've got to go to the shop after I've finished here anyway, the show. I've got to wander down to my local shop to pick up. Apparently, I've got to get bread, butter, uh, and don't know what else. So I've got to go to shop and I can pop to the post box on the way down the road. So I shall post those out later for you, Dad. Uh, if not, I'll post them tomorrow. Uh, one more brush. <laughs> Magnets will help do a falcon and piggyback on a pop. I've got no idea what's going on in the conversation now. I've lost completely. Did it do did it? So anyway, it's that time of the stream where I ask what is everybody having for their dinner if they've not already had their dinner. If you have had your dinner, what did you have? If you haven't had it yet, what are you having for your dinner later today? Do, 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 do. Tell me what you were eating with your face. Hopefully it'll be something nice and nice and nommy. Having a fry up, says LD. Oh! Oh, fry up. Oh, it's me hungry now, instantly. Corned beef pie, says Cynical Mag. Oh, yeah. Oh. Quano Man says food type stuff. It's always my favourite type, type stuff is food type stuff. Oh, fry up. Oh, we're having, um, just to, yeah, for full transparency, we are having, we're having a, a beef pie. It's a, just a like a Frey Bentos, a Frey Bentos tin pie. We just have a tin pie. But it's the minced beef pie. It's really nice. Although I have to say, those Frey Bentos pies that come in the big flat tin, they are really nice. But as pies, they're kind of rubbish. Because they're not really pies. It's just soup with some pastry floating on it. Because you get them out and you just... You, the stuff just pours out. They're not really lumpy. It's just, yeah, they're not, they're not brilliant. They're all right, but they're not... More like soup with the crust. Um, Nim Cinderin is having a grilled cheese sandwich on wheat bread with some turkey chilli from work for free. Ooh, yeah. Send one to me. Butcher that model is are having the roast chicken. This week I have been mostly eating the roast chicken. Uh, Paul Di Tommaso is having uh, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I had that for lots of them yesterday. Cheese strings. Oh yeah. Pepperette, a bag of chips and Reese peanut butter cup. Are you at work by any chance? Or is it just that's, that's your dinner? Because <laughs> you're being lazy. Uh, Bory models had ribeye steak. Oh yeah. Scale model vamp is having chicken strips with sweet corn bits wrapped in a green sleeve and cream cheese filling and melted cheese topping. That's all the words. That's all the words. There's so many things in that sentence. Oh, oh. Chicken strips with the sweet corn bits wrapped in a green sleeve and cream cheese filling and melted cheese topping. Oh. That's making me hungry. Oh, I always ask this question and regret it instantly. I'm going to empty this out for water. I'll just think about food. While I'm on the way. <laughs> oh, fry up. Oh, yeah, fry up a bit for a fry up. Oh. Mama Fox, we're not having a pie tonight. We're having fry up. Hey. <laughs> No, I'm having pie. Right. Uh, I need to dry my hands. What else we got going on? Yes, I'm at work and that's what I always bring, says Paul. Yeah, that's that's work food, that is. Sounds nice, though. Just had jam, roly-poly and custard, says Lord Barkley the third. Oh, jam, roly-poly. 
Speedy Kuwait had a chow mein pot noodle because I'm feeling lady. <laughs> you're feeling lady. Does lady know you're feeling lady? Um, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, chow mein pot. I, my favourite pot noodle is the green chicken and mushroom, but I am averse. I'm not averse to the occasional chow mein. They are quite nice. All right, is this dry brush bubble yet? No. I may have to get the hairdryer out because I'm getting bored of this now. No. Right, well, the only bit where it's pooling and still wet is on the actual dozer blade down here. I'm going to probably do pigment on there anyway. A little bit. I know I said I wouldn't, but I'll probably do a little bit of pigment. So what I'm going to do, let me give this a hairdryer blast. I'll turn the microphone off. Uh, let me give it a hairdryer blast. And then we can crack on with some dry brushing. But just so we're not all sitting around twiddling our thumbs. I'll, 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 for those who maybe aren't aware of what's going on. There you go. Back in a minute. I'll just turn the microphone off. I won't turn this telly off. One sec. There we are, sorry about that. So it's not fully dry on the dozer blade yet, but I'm going to be painting that, not going to be doing that green, so I'm not going to go near that now anyway. But everything else is dry, so let's put that back over there. Yeah, what a missing chat. Um, Tommy loves the pies in the tin, he calls them pie flavour pie. <laughs> pie flavour pie, I like that. Uh, oh no, jam roly poly, says Dad. Oh no. Just finished priming my kit with Chaos Black because I ran out of grey Tamiya, says Nim. The, the, uh, the, the Citadel primers are actually really good. They are pretty good. They're not super durable, not as durable as Tamiya, but then again, nothing's as durable as Tamiya. So, shut up with your Tamiya nonsense. With your anything else nonsense. So, yeah, Chaos Black's good. I would have done these in Chaos Black, but it's too cold and damp outside, so I had to use my airbrush and everything. Um, I think I'll make up some homemade chicken soup this week, says Paul Tomaso. Oh, lovely, lovely. Have you made any war hamsters yet, Fox? Spid sent me, if you watched my unboxing video, my mailbag video the day, Spid sent me a load of little uh, hamster heads to put on Space Marines. I haven't made any yet, Spid, because uh, the only Space Marines I've got that spare are um, old-style Space Marines. So what I might need to do is buy a little squad of Primani Space Marines first, because I want to do them on proper Primani Space Marines, not the old, not the old-style ones. Uh, but so, no, not yet. Not yet. I've hung over, did I? Do I need to? That's, that should be dry by the time I get round to that. Okay, so what's next? So, that's the shade coat done. You can see it's made the green a lot darker. But that's not even the start of it yet. What we need to do now is bring that back. We need to have the black dark shadowy areas being just dark shadow areas. Uh... 
what's this quote to that model says he's been painting the wussy 40k shoot everything from a long way away not the true warhammer up close and person with sharp pointy swords yeah see dave butch up model he likes his for he likes his age of sigma magic and swords nonsense whereas i'm more your give me a weapon with all the bullets and exploding that's what i like that's what i like right so yes let's do some dry brushing uh what we're going to do here is we're going to take the same color we started with which is castellan green if you remember from before uh where's my center is that my center that's my center point right we're going to take the same color as before castellan green and we're going to use a selection of dry brushes so we've got that one we've got a big ass dry brush we've got a little tiny pointy 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 dry brush a very small dry brush these aren't dry brushes but i use them as dry brushes uh, and that would probably do us. We don't need much more than them because they're all about the right size. And all we're going to do is some dry brushing. So I'm going to get my tissue ready. I like my spesmarines red with chainsawy bits, says Scale Model Vamp. Yeah, you can't go wrong with chainsaws. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take ourselves a dry brushings. Uh, this will probably be a good enough size. And you've seen me do this before, but for anybody that hasn't, this is how I like to do my, this is what the first step, or the, well, this is actually the third step of doing brush painted post shading that I, that I came up with me in my brain. So you get yourself some paint, not much, just a little bit on the brush. Again, this is the same base color that we used at the start. We're not doing any highlights yet. Get most of it off on the, on the tissue. But as Duncan would say, work it in amongst the bristles but also get most of it off and the trick here is to basically reintroduce the original base color and what i like to do is go in little circular motions now you remember when we looked at this it was all kind of it was all kind of patchy and horrible because of the shade this gets rid of that what this does is you get rid of the shade in the center of panels and you're replacing it you're blending it all out, but you're also replacing it with the original base color. And what you're aiming to do, and it won't be obvious when you're just doing this with just the base color, but what we're aiming to do is build up the color in the middle of panels. Now, like I said, when you do your base color that's on top of the original base color, it's not really that obvious. All you're doing is getting rid of the shade a little bit. But I'm keeping shade around the edge there of that panel and around these rivets. I'm staying away from those. Uh, let's get some more going on but it's not immediately obvious when you do this first coat because what we'll do is once we've done this first coat we'll then go in with successive other coats of lighter colors let's do it on the side here so you've got this panel here which is dark what i'm going to do is i'm going to build up the original base color in the middle because it's a dry brush it's going to build it up slowly i'm going little circular motions i find that little circular motions are a great way to do it without getting obvious brush marks or patchy dry mark uh, dry brushing texture it just helps even out so you get all the brush marks go over each other and blend each other away so what you end up with is actually a nice smooth fade between the color you're dry brushing on and the shaded area that's now darker so what I've got, I'll move the camera in in a second where I, you can't really see it there, but hopefully it comes out. What I've got now on this panel, which was just dark green a minute ago. I'll zoom in, hang on. Let me zoom, 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 zoom. What we have now, I know, I know it's crappy vision when you zoom in. Instead of this panel just being a dark green color, it's now lighter but with dark around the edge. I'll do another one. We'll do this one on this side. This is just so you can see what it is. So it makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to get some paint on the brush. A little bit of paint on the brush. Get most of it off. In amongst the bristles. Yes. And then let's get it in the shot. Try and keep it there. Little circular motions. I'm going very, I'm hardly touching the brush to the model. That's the trick. Don't put pressure on it. Little circular motions and go slowly. If you just jab it, 
you're not going to get the effect. You want the circular motions specifically because that helps blend away any brush marks. It's something I learned a long time ago colouring with pencil crayons. Before I started using watercolours for comic art, I used to use pencil crayons. Uh, and doing circular motions with the pencil crayons helps get rid of the pencil marks, so you just get a smooth colour. That's still on camera for you, just about. Where is it? Yeah, there it is. So little circular motions, a little bit of pressure, not too much, and build it up slowly. I'm staying away from the edges. I want to get it in the middle of the panel. And there we go, that should come out of camera. Now what you have is this beautifully shaded panel where you've still got the darker sort of edges here, darker edges around the edge. You've obviously not gone into the recesses and these little rivet holes here and this handle here. So that's still dark in there. You've got the lighter color in the middle. And what I need to do now is basically work my way around the whole vehicle doing just that. Now there's some areas where I'll just go over it quickly, because like down here, I can probably get a smaller dry brush into these little recesses down here, no problem. Um, but like for some really small areas, I'll probably just quickly go over the edges, because you can't get into everything. So I'll pull the camera back a little bit and I'll crack on with this as we carry on. But that's what I need to do now. So that's just, that's I've, I've kind of been doing this for a while. <clears throat> and I found this is a much more fun and easy way to do sort of pre and post shading and some sort of weathering than airbrushing. Airbrushing to me is, I can do airbrushing, I sometimes do when I have to, but since I've been learning how to do brushing brushing, airbrushing becomes an annoyance to me now. I can't stand it. I can't stand airbrushing anymore. I hate doing it. Right, so let's pull that back out again. I'll stay and zoomed in a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, seeing a few folks using pencil cranes to edge highlight seems like an awesome idea. You can do, yeah, you can use pencil cranes. No. Don't forget there are plenty of people that use pencils for, um, I'll show you, in fact, I'll show you if I can find a pencil. People that use pencils for weathering effects. For example, let me zoom in again. Here's a track. Now we're going to paint this track later on, okay? But if, imagine that was it finished and I wanted to give it a, 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 the effect of, say, a metallic edge. What you can do, you can get a pencil and just do it almost like a dry brush over the edges. And you get that kind of metallic twinge to edges. It's not really coming out because I'm trying to fiddle to get it on camera, but you can just rub it over the edges and you get a beautiful metallic. Is it going to come out? Can't really see it on camera. You get a, this one here. I can see it from here because I've got the light in the right place, but you get this beautiful metallic sort of on the edge. It's just graphite. I've got a graphite pencil, which is just a pencil made of graphite and nothing else. Uh, that's brilliant for that. And I'll probably use that when we get to the tracks. <coughs> uh, uh, Trot and Chard is in. Afternoon all. Welcome, Trot and Chard. Welcome, welcome. So I need to crack on, crack on with dry brushings. Uh, now we are going to do further colours once we've done this base green colour. The problem is I can't show you that because I'd have to use a different dry brush. I'd have to clean this dry brush off and then as soon as it's cleaned off it's wet so I can't then go ahead and do the next colour. So let's zoom out again. Hang on. Zooming out. So yeah, I can't do the second colours yet. So it is a slow process. It's not a fast process at all, but it's kind of fun because you start to see it build up. Now there's two types of dry brushing. There's, there's dry brushing where you flick it over the edge and it picks out the edge. Uh, but we're not doing that. That's not what we're doing here. I'm not aiming to pick out edges. I'm not doing an edge highlight dry brush, which is where you flick it over and you do that and you, you, you get the highlight on the edge. We're not doing that at all yet. That's later on. Right now, we're just doing shading with dry brushing, which is why I'm not flicking the brush back. I'm not flicking it. I'm going to get a smaller brush actually. Well, we'll, no, we'll use this one. That's, uh, I'm not flicking the brush around backwards and forwards over the edges. I'm just slowly blending the color. I hope you can see this. Slowly blending the colors into the middle of panels just to get the lighter highlights. Now, if you go into the, if you've got yourself the Citadel app on your iPad or mobile phone or whatever, if you haven't already got it, go and get it now. It's free. Costs you absolutely no pence. 
Uh, look up Moss Green. And if you look at that, you should be able to guess from that Moss Green what the next colour would be. We're going to, we'd have to, obviously I'll get this done and we'll carry on with this next week. But if you go and look at your app now and look at Moss Green, you should see what the next colour would be. And you can kind of guess then what we're going to be doing next week. So when we start this next week, we're going to be doing this. The other thing as well, when I was saying way back at the start when I was painting the base coat on, when I was saying how you don't need to worry if it's, <coughs> excuse me, if you've got the occasional very slight brush stroke or anything like that, don't worry. Because it's not, I said it's not, not as good as an airbrush, this, this, this uh, painting, brush painting. But I said, don't worry. Because all the weathering will hide it. What you will find, again, with these little circular motions, when you're doing this, you're going to be hiding or blending away a lot of those little brush marks. Because any little ridges and variations in height of the paint, you'll be filling that in with your paint that you're adding now. So if you want a nice way to get a nice texture, you can obviously go the Games Workshop way, which is to paint it the base colour, put a shade on neatly, and then do your edge highlighting and stuff, and yada, yada, yada. That's nice, but it's kind of boring. I want my, my vehicles to look used and beaten, battered. I want them to look like I've airbrushed them, but without actually using an airbrush. That missile is very, that missile is very loose. I'm going to have to re-glue that. Now, there is a video, if you want to see this, this technique properly, there is a video on my channel, uh... Something is called something like how to airbrush, how to do pre-shading without an airbrush or something like that. So do go and check it out. It's on there. It's a proper, more, you know, descriptive uh, example of this technique. This is a bit quick and slapdash because I'm doing it live. Uh, but if you want to know in more depth how to do this, do go and check out that video because it takes a little while to get used to, get the hang of it. But once you get the hang of this technique... <clears throat> you can really can start to do some excellent paint jobs without even having to go anywhere near an airbrush. Now, I know for some of you, see, the thing you have to keep in mind is that, you know, I've got an airbrush and most people we know are quite happy to use an airbrush. But there's a lot of people out there, maybe some of you guys, that either can't afford an airbrush because it's not cheap or have tried an airbrush but didn't really take to it or you didn't like the experience or you just you didn't think you're very good at it. And you didn't really want to go back and try it again. And that's absolutely fine. There are some things that you can only do with an airbrush. And I thought for a long, long time that pre-shading, or the kind of effect you get with pre-shading, was only possible with an airbrush. But I found out it's not. You can get that effect without an airbrush. So don't think, because you haven't got an airbrush, that you're stuck to doing... Warhammer TV style slightly flat paint jobs on your vehicles you're not by any long shot There's plenty of techniques you can use to get nice textures and colors on your vehicles keep in mind by the way with this video the colors are a bit more extreme on the telly for you than they are in real life they're not quite as bright and dark in reality the colors look a lot different on the on the telly screen uh, but there you can see we're starting to get some nice variable patches now. And it's just given us that nice, slightly patchy, uneven colour look. It's not just a flat green. You've got these nice bits of variation. And once you've got all these bits done, you'll see some nice shading where all the panel lines are. Uh, and it'll all come together. Let's get some in there. Now, I'm not too fussed about these bits down here because obviously that's going to get covered in earth and weathering. But we'll still go ahead and do it the same. So this is maybe not the fastest process, if remember I was saying before about getting the things just painted up to get on the tabletop. It's not the fastest process in the world. But it's just kind of fun. You can't really go wrong with this technique. There's not really much you can screw up. Uh, let's have a quick look at the chat. Uh, Scale Model Vamp says, so guys, I have a question. Why is it that the bad guys always have the good and best looking stuff and suits? It's true. Look at the Nazis. They're evil. The horrible. They were the bad guys. They're horrible. But they had the best looking equipment. You, you can't deny it. Compare a, a German tank, World War II tank, to a, a, a Allied tank. Eh, you can't. You can't go wrong. German fighter plane, apart from Spitfire, obviously. But yeah, hey. 
but just the bad guys always have the uh, can see it fox wait what can you see dad what can you see do i need to be embarrassed or something am i showing something i shouldn't be showing uh i think in cinema it's a western cinema thing in anime the good guys have cool stuff yeah dad says yeah i got a box of them skulls uh, few for, uh, okay. Thought I was already subbed. Oh, okay, Boris subbed to Dad's channel. No idea what's going on in the chat now. Pineapple, pineapple, pineapple says goes Lyle. You know, you know, pineapples work perfectly on pizza. If you can have a pizza, put pineapple on it. And here's a handy tip: if you are having a pizza. That you're putting yourself in the oven, not like a not like a from the pizza place pizza, but if you're actually making a pizza, not a homemade pizza, but you're getting a pizza out of the freezer, you know, and you're going to stick a pizza in the oven for twenty minutes. Uh, whatever the pizza is, if you want to improve it vastly, big vastliness, um, take some spring onions, chop them up into tiny little bits, and sprinkle them on top of the pizza before you put it in the oven. Oh, <gasps> smells fantastic. We had the other night. It was a mozzarella uh, and tomato pizza which sounds boring but it's basically slices of tomato and slices of mozzarella on top of a pizza and it was quite nice actually but i had some spring onions so i chopped them up into little bits and sprinkled them on and stuck it in the oven and by god it made it taste a million times better <gasps> they're nice no when you had the shading up fox oh, okay cool shading 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 rawhide uh, it was a painting. I forgot what I was in the middle of doing there. On oh, the door at the back. There we go. Yeah, just some very, very finely chopped up spring onion. It was amazing. Changed the whole flavour of the pizza. And of course, pineapple always makes pizza better. In the same way that you should always play with inverted sticks, pineapple is good on pizza. Now, the thing to keep in mind, uh, as I've always said, I always say this when we're going along, but the thing to keep in mind, like I say, we've got more highlight coats to come. There's not just this green going on, because this is just the original base colour green on top of the original base colour green. Um, we've got more highlight colours to come. So we're going to be doing this like two or three times, not just this one base colour to get this patchy effect. But there's also more weathering to come. And the thing to always keep in mind, remember saying earlier on about how things always look terrible until they're finished. Always keep in mind that we've got more stuff to come. We've got chipping. We've got the actual weathering, which we haven't even started yet. Because we've not even, this is still doing the base cut. This is still the base colour. We've got actual weathering to come yet. So once the chipping and weathering is done, it all goes together to create this really wonderful looking effect. And I'll tell you, if I could actually just from now on not have to use an airbrush ever again, I'd be so happy. But there'll be times when I need to. So I don't know if it'll come out on camera, but there's, I'll zoom in again. Hang on. Didn't it just to illustrate the effect again? It doesn't really come out on camera, but you can see here, and you'll see better when there's more of a highlight colour. Uh, but you've got here the sort of dark shadow line where the rivets are. And I've just put the brush between and gone like that. And slowly I'm building up a lighter colour in the bit between the, 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 the rivets here and the door. I've got this lighter patch here. Uh, and that will fade between the light bit and the dark bit. And when we do more highlight colours, that will bring it out even more. I'll use a smaller brush. It'll bring it out even more. And it'll look like I've pre-shaded under that little strip there where the rivets are. But I haven't. It's all post-shading. It's all post-shading. Post shading for the win. Uh, zoom out again. Yeah, if I could just brush paint from now on. And I'm really, I'm really happy for the. Uh, if you know my my build schedule, I'm about to. Well, I'm working on the first episode of the little miniature chibi sub uh, build for e models. But when that's done, I'm starting on my master grade Cesarbi. But what's making me really happy about the Cesarbi and making me excited to do it is that it's going to be weathered and a static model so for a lot of it i'll be doing stuff like this brush painting i don't need to airbrush everything so for example what i can do i'll get the inner frame built 
as best I can. And I'll airbrush that to get it all coloured. So I'm not having to airbrush and paint individual frame pieces, which takes a lot of time. Uh, and then the armour, the outer armour, for a lot of it, I can actually either get it in place and then paint it or paint it in sub assemblies. I'm so looking forward to that. I really, I'm looking forward to that. Right, so what we're going to do, what time is it? It's 17.35. So what I'll do, I'll probably call it quits now. I'll go off and have to get the rest of that finished. I'll get the rest of the shading on this done before next week. I'll clean my brush for now, though, because I need to go and make my tea and go to shop in a minute. Um, I'll get the rest of that this colour shaded. And then when we come back next week, we'll start off doing the same again. So it's not going to be the most exciting episode next week, but we'll start off doing the same again. But with this time with the next highlight colour up. And my intention here is to get all the, the base colour sorted. So uh, get the, the base green and then the highlight colour greens as well. So that by the time we finish doing all that, what we have is all the green parts painted and fully painted but not weathered. Then we can paint everything else that needs to be a different colour. And then once that different colour, all the other colour parts are done, we can then start with the weathering and the decals and things like that. So, but this is still just working on, at this point, we're still concentrating on the base colour. So even though we've got two or three more, like, different shades to apply, it's still the base colour. This is what you would do with an airbrush. You'd paint it, you'd, you'd do a primer coat, you'd spray on some black where you want the shadow to be, you'd paint over the green, you maybe do a highlight colour, and that will take you maybe an hour. This is going to take longer, but it's more fun. Uh, there is one other thing I want to show you before we go. Talking of the Cesabi, there's one other thing I want to show you. World exclusive. Well, that's like it's even slightly important. Uh, George, if you're watching, I can't remember if you're in the chat or not. I have received the decals for the Master Grade Sazabi. I shall move this. I shall move this cutting mat out of the way because it's filthy, filthy dirty, filthy dirty cutting mat. Nice clean cutting mat. Yes, lovely. I have received the decals. We have the decals. Are you ready? Not sure how many of all of these I'm going to use, but we have the decals for. Let me zoom out. The decals for my Master Grade Cesarbe. Nothing to do with Warhammer. But look at that. How nice is that? They are gorgeous. They are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now they're not pre cut, which means I'm going to have to take a lot of time cutting them out, especially where there's wording. But they're not pre-cut, so the smaller ones is not a major problem. For the big ones, yeah, I'm going to have to take my time trimming them out. But they are absolutely fantastic. I've got these with the white tips and these guys with the red tips. Because some are going to be on red and some are going to be on yellow, probably. So I went for two different colours. But they are fantastic. I cannot wait to get this kit going. The Master Grade says, Arba Barba Bee 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 because it's going to be red and yellow and weathered and chipped and beaten. And yeah, I can use all my Citadel paints. And it's not going to be worried about things chipping off when I move joints. Because it's only fixed pose. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. So there you go. There's the decals. World exclusive. Yeah, never seen before. Decals all sorted. So. That's going to do for that. I'll put these back in the box. In the thing. But I think what we're going to do. I think that'll do us. Because I need to go and do the shopping. I need to go to the shop now and get my tea sorted out. So we'll, I'll get that finished. I'll get that base coat green finished. Like I said, there's going to be more. It's not just that one colour. If you wanted to, if you're doing this yourself uh, and you're just keen to get things on the tabletop, you could just do one base colour and then do the highlight coat with the same colour. It's one way of doing it. It's not the end of the world if you don't want to do that. But we'll be doing more. And we'll do those next week. So I'll get the rest of this Castellan green brushed over to give all the highlights and we'll carry on from next week with the next one so just remains for me to say thank you very much to everyone who's been watching uh, thank you for spending some time with me uh, as always don't forget uh, if you want to join the best place if you've not joined it already yet do pop along to the model makers boom hook and join that group we've got the saturday evening group build uh, videos every saturday only for the next few weeks well, we've got those going. Just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model boom hut. If you're not joined there already, go and join. It's great fun. Don't forget, of course, if you like, to, as always, if you'd like to support this channel, please like and subscribe to the channel. 
hit the notification bell to make sure you get notified. And if you do watch a video and there's an advert on it, try and sit through the advert. It helps me out a great deal. Now, if you'd like to really support the channel, you can become a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash model making guru. Address is there because I depend on my patrons for my income. Uh, and last of all, just go and make something awesome. Go and be awesome. And thank you so much for watching. I shall see all of you, uh, most of you, I should think, on the eModel stream tomorrow uh, on the eModels channel. So keep your eye out for that with me, Ted and Chris. But until then, keep your eye out for the... Oh, there's a video coming out in the next few days as well. If you've been trying to film on your iPhone or you've got an iPhone, you're looking to know how to use an iPhone to film videos for YouTubes, there'll be a video coming up in the next two or three days which very quickly explains that, how I do it. So there you go. Anyway, that's going to do it. So until next time, I shall say thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome until... Um, blah, blah, wow, words. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas. I don't know which one to press now. Which one do I press now? Uh, it's uh, this one. I couldn't remember which one to press. <laughs> Back in a minute.